scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Your ideology. There are people, for instance, who are under a lot of pressure over their physical appearance, dressing well, um, getting a designer watch, a designer cloth, you know, they are, they are so conscious about those things. That consciousness is stimulated by an ideology. Is that true? Among other reasons, an ideology that informs them that on the strength of wearing expensive things, you are perceived to be valuable. Are we together now? So that ideology stimulates a passion for wanting a lot of things. There are people, for instance, who reject prosperity and embrace poverty because according to their ideology, simplicity is the same as being poor. So in a bid to respond to a desire to be simple, are we, are we together now? They, they reject anything that will make them blessed. You are helplessly a slave of your ideology. You are helplessly a slave of your ideology. Your life literally revolves along the plane of your ideology. And therefore, if God wants to step into your life and upgrade you, if God wants to bring you to a point where you are so built that you allow his spirit the fullness of his essence to find expression in you then you must be able to submit to him and allow him to change your ideology our ideologies are built by many factors culture for instance I've, I've, I've taught that here you can get the teachings culture have shaped our mindsets culture have shaped our perceptions we see things from a particular vista in physics there's what we call refraction right I, I taught the school of ministry students yesterday and I felt a need to just bring that example there is what we call refraction when you when you study physics there's even what they call a refractive index is that true um, you have sorry those of us who are not science based I apologize but it's a very simple explanation that on the strength of having a glass block or anything of that nature, you look through it and you can see an object. It will appear in a distance and in a form that may not be the way it is originally. And that is on the strength of what you are looking at. Let me use an example that all of us can relate with. How many of you have seen cars that um, they write something little or the side mirror? Objects appear larger or smaller than they actually are is that true so the what you are looking at in that mirror is not exactly the way it is you may see it bigger than it really is or smaller than it really is are you getting the point now so your interpretation is based on your perception you must understand this to be successful in life you must rise to a point where you have what 
I call a superior ideology. An ideology that is so aligned to the mind of Christ. Many of us do not care about our ideologies. And we labor in the place of prayer. We labor in the place of fasting. We assimilate the word. And then there is such a bank of spiritual treasure. But there is no platform for it to find expression. Because the realities of the spirit are, are like, like power banks. But they, they are dependent on a transformed mind to fully find expression. The degree to which you have the mind of Christ is the degree to which you can allow heavenly things find expression through you. This defines our possibilities in the kingdom. Hallelujah. So you must realize that your ideology is very important. I keep challenging our ideologies because if your ideology does not change, nothing will change in your life, I guarantee you. Not even education will change you. Not marriage will change you. Everywhere you go, you go with your ideology. Anything you do, you do from the standpoint of your ideology. There are some of us, for instance, come if this gentleman look up please everyone if you can if this gentleman has an ideology of inferiority he feels very bad about himself it doesn't matter how he got that ideology did you know that if you look at this guy and say wow your suit is beautiful you're looking sharp he will interpret your commendation on the strength of his ideology and he will think it's a diplomatic way of mocking him is that true whereas that's supposed to be a, 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 I mean a good commendation that he should receive with thanksgiving but then it comes and is interpreted on the lens of his ideology and he goes back hating you for doing something right are we together now our mindsets are very important many of us are fighting battles that do not exist today battles that our minds created Many of us are hating people today who do not even know. Our minds created that hatred. There are people under stress that should never be under stress. There are people dying under high blood pressure. Preachers dying because there is a parameter that their ideology has put together. I know men of God who suffer all the time, harass members to try to bring congregations because to them they feel once you have a crowd like this is a representation of your anointing are we together now and so they get deceived and rather than focusing to build the people they do not know that in a congregation like this success is not measured generally you pick people one by one to ascertain the extent of the man of God's contribution to their life you can never generalize a successful congregation if you want to know how successful koinonia is you have to pick men at random and then speak to them on the matters of the kingdom and find out their individual degrees of comprehension when you gauge the average on their of their understanding it represents the extent of my teaching not the crowd are you seeing that now yeah i learned this early in life so there are pastors who are under pressure and that wrong ideology motivates them into thinking the more I bring in men of God from abroad, the more I bring in this and that, the more there are conferences, the more there are conventions, the more crowds will come. Responding sincerely, but a slave to their ideologies. There are pastors and pastor's wives who are so insecure. If the pastor buys a particular kind of jeep, Nobody buys that kind of jeep again because his concept of honor is that you stand alone. Are we together now? There are pastors who the moment they find out that other younger ministers, their training are rising up, they create a spiritual teaching that ensures that they remain at a level and never rise up. Are we together now? So their ideology is informing the activities in their ministry. There are pastors, for instance, 
who think respect and honor in ministry is when you see a man of God and then you lie down. I'm, I'm not against uh, all of that, but I used to know uh, um, one, one very foolish pastor some years ago who made it a, a rule for his members to kneel down when they see him. No, no, literally, I'm not, I'm not joking. Anywhere in the market, in the rain, once you see him coming, you kneel down. Now, now, you see, listen, listen. Don't laugh. There are still people doing it today. There are churches where the man of God is so insecure. The moment there is anything that looks like a coup against him, they, they go as far as even flogging members. Are we together now? Your life revolves around the quality of your ideology. One person will be celebrating something and another one is destroying it because both of them are looking at the same thing from different perspectives. And so as I challenge you every week, part of the things that the Holy Ghost is doing is to be able to create a divorce between us and the ideologies that have kept us limited. Listen, many of us think that to make spiritual men, all you have to talk about is the seven rivers that are in heaven or the plain describing the things that are around the white throne. Believe me, believe me when I tell you this, you don't build people that way. You must give people a holistic building that makes them capable in every ramification. The moment you teach people and your, your paradigm to them is lopsided, the limitation of your spiritual understanding reflects on them. Have you seen churches like that? Men of prayer, but broke people. They are reflecting the man of God's bias. He has refused to open them up to that dimension. Or you have a church where people are leaders, they are visionaries, they are businessmen, but they are carnal. They are not spiritual at all. They are excellent. They are exceptional. They are reflecting the bias of the man of God. And it's my job under God to make sure. Don't worry guys, please. Except we have more people outside. But those here, I think they are, they are a lot comfortable in. So we don't have to bring them out. It's cold. So I don't think the heat is too much. Any asthmatic patient, you are healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So you must challenge yourself to contend for an excellent mindset. It is lack of an excellent mindset that makes, for instance, men of God fight themselves. Because they think respect in ministry or in the kingdom based on their mindset is when you stand alone and outshine others. Are we together now? And so the more a man of God stands in a class where he sustains the capacity to outshine others, Right? And so we compare ourselves with ourselves and the Bible says, whoever does that is not wise. The question now, before we even start is, are you willing to submit your mindset to be changed? Listen, I really cannot help you if you are unwilling, if you are, un, if you are not malleable enough for your mindset to be transformed. I made a decision years ago and that decision still stands. Anything that is not going to contribute to me manifesting the fullness of the life and the power of God, serving the Lord with all my heart and blessing my generation is not worth my pursuit. I will dump it. Including friendships, including ideologies about ministry. If this for me, given by God, represents the highest level of ministry, and this is the dimension that will produce the greatest efficiency in my life, then I do not want to improve. I want to stay here for the sake of that optimal delivery. You must be this passionate about God, and you must be passionate enough to submit your mind. Like, like you carry a cloth and you give a dry cleaner, he said, please go and walk on this cloth. Walk on it. How many of you have seen them repaint a car? You've seen them, you know, how, uh, uh, what they call them, the painters, the car painters now. They first take it to a workshop. Is that true? 
in a bit to paint that car, they can dismantle everything, the lights. Momentarily, the, the, the aesthetics of the car will have to um, be forgotten for a while. You have to remove the bulbs, remove everything. You have to take away the tires. You have to get all of these things and put together. And then you start spraying. And when you spray, you find out that there are little things you have to fix up everything. But the moment you are done and you bring out that car, the value increases. That's what God is doing to us. And so you must submit yourself to learn in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lay your hands on your head and pray for one minute and say, Lord, everything inside this head that needs to change must change. Lift your voice and pray. Shabalakatabalarama. I'm tired of keeping things in my mind that are responsible for authorizing darkness in my life. I'm tired of holding on to ideologies that are keeping me poor, keeping me powerless, keeping me uh, in lack of character. I am tired of holding on to precepts and ideologies that are making me fail. I am truly, truly determined. Lord, I authorize you to edit my mind. Change my ideologies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Proverbs chapter 1. Very quickly, let's start. We're going to talk about four different areas very quickly. This was a preparatory teaching. Just to get our minds together. Proverbs chapter 1. We'll read from verse 3 and 4. And then we'll commence the teaching. Are you there? Proverbs chapter 1, 3 and 4. If you are there, say amen. Let's be fast. It says, to receive the instruction of wisdom. Righteousness. Justice. And equity. Verse 4. It says, to give prudence to the simple. The young man, knowledge and discretion. Let's read it to verse 5. A wise man will hear and he will increase in learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. In other words, he was telling us the motivation behind the writing of the book of Proverbs. That this is the motivation. That every time people who are inclined to wisdom hear it, it will increase them in learning. Hallelujah. I want to challenge your understanding first and foremost about life. Write that word down. Your understanding about life. Let's look at the concept of life and living very briefly. I am trusting that God will challenge us and improve the quality of our living. There are certain things you need to know about life for you to live effectively. Number one, life is a gift. Life is a trust. It's important that you are, if you are alive and under the sound of my voice, you realize this. Life is a gift. It doesn't matter whether you acknowledge the giver or not. Life is a gift. Secondly, life is a trust. What is a trust? A trust is something that is committed to you, right? And accountability will be required of it. If you do not know that life is a gift, and if you do not know that life is a trust, then you can live anyhow. When a man takes a bottle of liquor, beer, and just gulps everything, he is expressing his ignorance about understanding that this life is a gift. Statistics, brothers and sisters, tells us, I don't know if it's an old statistic, I, don't, I really don't know what is the current statistics now. But as at the last time I checked, it said eight people die per second. How many people? Eight people die per second. From the time we began this service till now, you can calculate how many people have died. And these people have not died just because they are not Christians or they are backsliders. Pastors have been among them. All kinds of things. This year, for instance, one of our sisters transited to glory. One who had committed herself serving very faithfully in the ministry. 
was a time of grief for us, but we rejoiced because she left with an understanding, knowing that life is a gift, and she spent her life serving the king. Let me tell you right now, if no one has told you, the life that you have is a gift. Life is also a trust. The meaning of that is that one day, the real owner of that life will make, he will demand accountability for the use of that life. Drunkard, smoker, gambler, thief, terrorist, preacher, good husband, foolish man, wise man, it doesn't matter. Life is a trust. Look, this should, this should, this should bring a sense of reverence to you that you are not ultimately, um, you are not the ultimate custodian of your life. You are only a steward of it. It's like a trust, right? It's like a grant. How you give somebody 10,000 naira and you say, start this business. I give you access, but it's not your own. I can call on you at every time to find out what you have done. And it is within my power to withdraw the grant if I see you misusing it. That revelation that your life is a trust alone will sponsor a sense of seriousness, will sponsor a sense of godliness, are we together? And will sponsor a sense of urgency as you live your life. The way people live their lives, especially young people, obviously shows that they are not aware first that life is a gift you watch people come back from a party they come back and they are drunk and the guy is on high speed and he takes one leg and puts it on top of the uh, uh, what do you call it the steering and the guy is just speeding and the ladies in the car are laughing they are saying don't speed and the guy is trying to impress them it's because they are not aware that in one minute that gift can leave the rich fool forgot this. He built bands and kept it together and said, My soul, find rest. And he said, You are a foolish man. This night, today, your soul will be required. Are we together now? Very important. Koinonia, you must understand that if you woke up alive this morning and you are here listening to me, there is someone who gave you only a fool will say in his heart, there is no God. No matter how stubborn you are, you do not know where the wind you breathe comes from. You have never tried to find out where does the wind store itself. When you sleep in the night, you have never tried to find out where you go to. All you know is that you get up in the morning and you yawn around. But between your time of sleep and your time of waking up, someone was watching you are we together and then you wake up with that arrogance kai i'm happy to go and look for trouble again and the one who gave you the life is watching and the clock of your destiny is ticking and the devil beguiles you into thinking it does not matter oh it does don't let any man deceive you it does oh i'm going to challenge you are we together now? The consciousness that life is a trust alone will make you not to get up and intentionally want to destroy another life. Are we together now? Now don't feel bad for those of you who have had all kinds of past. We are not talking about that. The blood of Jesus has washed it. But then I'm not necessarily talking of things like abortion and the rest. When somebody gets up and he says, I like this girl. Sam, leave her alone. She's my girl and you carry knife to prove your, your passion and the fire that is burning inside your soul. That loss and you stab Sam and divide him into two. And then you bounce around and you, you are going to feel sleepy in the night. Look at Only a man that does not sleep has a right to claim he is a custodian of his life. Because after everything you do, I will wake up and I promise you I will deal with you, foolish man. And he goes to sleep. For six hours, he does not know what can happen. And then he wakes up and remembers that he planned to kill somebody. Then he goes to do it again. 
and then he returns tired and he sleeps and he does that for 10 years 20 years and the real owner is just watching he knows your name he knows your every thought he sees each tear that falls and he hears you when I call. Life is a gift. Life is a trust. And let me tell you something. Life has a reason. There is a reason why everyone is alive. Whether you know it or not, if there is a restaurant and you do not know there is a restaurant, it doesn't stop the fact that there's food going on there. Is that true? That you are ignorant of the fact that the building you just passed is a restaurant does not mean they will stop cooking because of your ignorance. There is a reason why God kept you alive. You shot yourself with all kinds of injections, but there is a reason why God kept you alive. While you are smoking, you go and doing everything. There is a reason why God kept you alive. Are we together? While you are gulping tatalin, there is a reason why you are alive. Everyone who wants to maximize his life and living must be able to realize that the ultimate purpose of life is to, or the ultimate wisdom as far as living is concerned, is to spend your life serving the Lord and being a blessing to humanity. Any man that spends his time and his life doing this is a wise man. That you spend the entire lifespan of your life First and foremost, realizing that there is a God in heaven. Oh, listen, listen. God consciousness is a key to effective living. The realization that there is God. That, that concept, that understanding, that there is one who is above me. There are people on earth who are stubborn. They don't listen to parents. There are people who are stubborn. They don't listen to the law. There are people who are hardened capons. They are occultists. They are criminals. But there is, there is a God that sits in the heavens. And he watches over the affairs of men. You must live with that God consciousness. That the purpose of your living is to commit your entire life serving the Lord and being a blessing to humanity. He told Abraham in Genesis 12, when you read 1 and 2, he says, In thee shall all the families of the earth, not be cursed, be blessed. If you want to live life to its fullest, you must live with eternity in view. Eternity in view. That no matter the quality of your life on earth, you realize that is only like a measuring tape. Listen, the, 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 the concept of eternity is something that if, if you do not keep reminding yourself, you will live a wasted life here on earth. I guarantee you, whether as a preacher, as just a, a citizen living in the world, a day will come when what we know as existence will be folded like a carpet. Are we together now? And that time is not too far from now. Whether you believe it or not, you must witness it. For sure. Did you know, brothers and sisters, that death is a mirage? There really is nothing. Death like cessation of living. No. Men don't stop living. They only exit this realm. The question has never been, will you spend eternity? You must spend it. The question is location. 
not that you you are going to spend eternity for sure the question is what location so when you live your life with eternity in view knowing that all this one that i insult people and abuse people a day will come this life will be folded like a curtain those who are old people now 70 years 80 do you know there was a time they were teenagers and to them they felt there was time but you turn and see them now all they have to tell you is a legacy of what they did with their own life i can remember when i went to js1 i remember clearly one iron box my father went to go and bring one old box they repainted it because he didn't want them to boggle it heavy box you can't carry it alone yeah very clearly we were going together with my colleagues they were all crying missing home my excitement leaving home knew no bounds i was happy i couldn't believe it i mean i i couldn't believe i was going to leave my father Today, we we'll only laugh about it. But back then, it was serious. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The same way some of you are sitting down here, you will open your eyes and find out that your son is graduating from the university as a doctor. And he said, please tell me I'm lying. I was in Koinonia yesterday. No, you were in Koinonia 30 years ago, 50 years ago, 60 years ago. Life is very brief deceptfully brief life is deceptfully brief and if you don't come into that recognition and that realization that 80 years is not such a big time 120 years is not such a big time compared to eternity eternity minus 120 years is what James chapter 4, verse 14. This is just the first shot. There are one, two, three, four. Four of these that God is going to give us like a penicillin to really help us. James 4, okay. James 4, 14. Are we there? Okay, let me read. Whereas ye know not what shall be the next day. He was talking. Let's start reading from verse 13 so that you see the context. 13. Come now, ye that say today or tomorrow we shall go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. 14. Whereas ye know not what shall happen the next day. For what is your life? The apostle is teaching us now. It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and vanished away. Listen, let me tell you the truth. James really meant what he was saying. I've seen this thing in the realm of the spirit. When you are caught up in the realm of the spirit and you look at earth, you will see it like a vapor. What you call reality is a vapor compared to the realm of the spirit. literally like smoke that will soon vanish you know how when you set a paper on fire smoke just comes and in less than one minute it's gone that's what happens that's why the bible says a thousand years in x time is like a day before god one thousand years is like a day before god so from the day you were born till now is still god's today So when you stand up and say, I'm not your mate, in heaven, it's still today. While you are warning people and saying, let me tell you, it's still today. From the day you are born till the day you die, from heaven's view, it's called what? So every time God says today, he knows what he's saying. To you, you think it's tomorrow. Your tomorrow is in God's today. 
Bless me and see what I will become. They say, we are in today. We are already seeing what you will become. Listen, when you know this, you will truly serve God in truth. That's what makes him an all-wise God. His system of timing is amazing. 1,000 years to one day. So when a preacher starts ministry and 10 years later on he has left God and he said, Lord bless me. They are still watching the movie in today. I want you to fast forward life and you will see the foolishness of men. If there is a way you can record a man's one week and play that one week in a one hour video, you will know that we are really foolish as we live. All of a sudden you see a man coming to bed. Then the video fast forward, you see him stealing. Then later on, you see him apologizing. Then you see him trying to look for another man's wife. Then you see him do something and you are like, my goodness, is this what we do? That's what we do all the time. You need to live in God's realm of today to see how foolish we live in this life. Is God helping us? If you want to live life to its fullest, you must be guided by three things. Number one, the fear of the Lord. Number two, conscience. Number three, a sense of posterity. Those who live like fools are those who ignore this. Any man who is living to make the most of his life must live with a sense of the fear of the Lord. One. Number two, conscience. Number three, posterity. Psalms 90 verse 12. Let's rush there. Psalms 90 verse 12. Very popular scripture. Psalms 90 verse 12. It says, so teach us to number our days. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to pay attention. Day by day as we live. Let us pay attention to our lives and the bible says we will apply our hearts unto wisdom that means if you number your day and i'm telling you the best time to number your day is during your birthday where you sit down it's not just the time to eat cake and talk it's the time to sit down and say my goodness i was 36 years last year i'm 37 years now what does that mean if I'm spending 120 years on earth, 120 minus 36, this is how long I have to live. What have, have I justified living 36 years? Oh, I am 50 years. Everybody is saying congratulations. Golden Jubilee, midlife crisis. How many more years do I have to live? Can I justify the 50 years of living? Your heart has been pumping for six years, for 50 years. It, it kept pumping and you were just using the energy it sent to you to do nonsense for 50 years there must be a change in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ there must be a change for you to live effectively you must focus on the things that matter one of the deceptive things that people do that robs them from effective living is that they major on minor things and they minor on major things. We spend all our time and energy on things that from heaven's perspective are considered minor. Then we give very little attention to the things that we would want to call major. Whereas from heaven's perspective, or from, that we call minor, whereas from heaven's perspective, they are major things. Is God speaking to us? I'll give you an instance. When someone gets up and his whole obsession in life is money, marriage, house, car, that, that's everything that drives his life. Oh, I must have a car. I must have a house. That person is majoring on minor things. Whereas the nobler things in life like your service and your commitment, your testimony and your track record that you love God, 
the sacrifices, your commitment in the house of God, the things that you have done on account of your faith, the lives that you changed, the destinies that came to know the Lord Jesus Christ because you were born, we minor on those things. And so this is what we do. One day we just challenge ourselves and say, three days we are going to be on evangelism. Are you ready? Yes. Then we now go out. And everybody is moving out. And you just block somebody and say, do you know that Jesus is coming soon? Yes. I am testy. The person now says, I am testy. You now bring him to the church and he sits down and then you never have a passion for souls again. It was just, it was just a church calendar activity to fulfill all righteousness. You went out for two or three days. One, one or two people. People who are even, some of them were already born again. You forced them to say the salvation prayer and wrote their names and brought the booklet and said, Pastor, please take your rubbish. I got people born again. The passion is not genuine. How many people have as a major passion for souls? I'm not just talking of getting people born again, but seeing lives and destinies changed. These are the major things in life. What of a testimony? Look at what the Bible says. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. How many people are interested in that kind of business? The business of laying up for yourself treasures in heaven. That when you go to heaven, there's, there's that song, can, can reduce the key. Toss that, that Anglican song, remember? Only remember for what we have done. Play it, Mike. Learn it. Very good song. It's a song that makes you think about your life. When you are living carelessly, it just calls you down. Thus would we pass from the earth and its toiling. Only remembered by what we have done. Only remembered. Thus would we pass from the earth and its toiling. A strange man in the Bible. Listen, the seventh man from creation, the Bible calls him Enoch. This is all that the Bible tells us about Enoch. Never tells us how many wife or wives he married. Never told us how many cathedrals he built. This is what the Bible says. And Enoch walked with God. And he was not. For God took him. Only one more time in scripture we see his prophecy. A man who lived so long. And the summation of his existence. Is that he panted after God in all his life. What a testimony. If all there is in your testimony your epitaph when you die the troublemaker has gone finally peace returns to planet earth how about that let me tell you something god is my witness it is never my desire that if christ tarries and i depart from this world my ultimate pursuit is not to be associated with mundane things he started this, he started that, he started koinonia, he started this. All those things are rubbish as far as I'm concerned. All I want to know is how many lives can say, I am a life that was changed. That's the major. The house you built, the suit you died in, does not matter. It's a minor. But you are almost killing your tailor because of it. You are majoring on the minor. I am so glad you came. That at the end of my life, somebody can stand and say, it was because of Joshua Selman that I came. Not even in my death. That's the greatest testimony today. If you like, bring one million naira and say, man of God, the grace of God upon your life is like from earth to heaven. I'll just be listening to you. But if you want to turn me on, just tell me how God has used my life to change you. Sir, do you know that I used to be this and that? But see what the Lord has used koinonia messages. I, I can go back shedding tears. If you give me a plot of land, if you give me a car, 
thank God for those things, but I tell you sincerely, those things are mundane to me. My passion and my desire is to see how much I can have a testimony before my God and my Creator that I spent my life serving Him as a gratitude to this gift of life that He gave me. Second, that I can be able to be an extension of His influence to contribute my own quota to preparing His army and bring as many people. My desire, my desire, is to sing your praise to the ends of the earth that we want mighty voice every tribe and tongue rejoices our heart and our desire is to see the nations worship this is why i sleep this is why i wake up this is why i eat this is why i hate poverty this is why i hate the devil this is why i love people this is my motivation to be able to serve the lord that's why my secret place is my greatest asset not ministry i love my secret place more than invitations to minister and whatever no 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 i love it more than a phone call that can change my life forever because when all is said and done and this world fades like a shadow there is only one track record well done thou good and faithful servant enter thou into my rest when was the last time you thought about this if you thought about this, you would have withheld your mouth from blaspheming a man of God or gossiping about a roommate or a worker. Some of these excesses find expression in our lives when we forget. Is God helping us? You must focus on people if you want to live effectively. You must focus on your assignment. Focus on your business. There are people who live their lives and all you are doing is involving yourself with other people's business. You have your own life to live and your time is short. If God gave you 80 years to spend on earth and you spend 60 years escorting other people in destiny and then you don't even know why you were born, you don't know anything about your life. Let me just shift this. If you are here and you are seated listening to me and you really cannot tell me in one sentence why you are alive, you do not know. It's a serious reason. It is worth it to go for a retreat and say, Lord, why am I here? I'm tired of clapping for other people's vision. I'm tired of clapping for other people's destiny. He said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it has been written of me to do your will. Not everybody will be a pioneer of a ministry. Not everybody will be a man of God. But even if you are serving in ministry, you should be able to know what your assignment is there and commit yourself this is the ideology you must have about life this is the first subject we are dealing with tonight about life these are facts of life that you must know you must live with eternity in view as you go back go and take an inventory on your life what are the things that I spend my 24 hours doing separate them into two majors and minor you will be surprised to see how much of your time you give to the major things the things that matter things that matter we can spend seven hours sitting and daydreaming about rubbish we can spend 10 hours watching movies and films and there's nothing wrong with that but learn to major on the major and minor on the minor by the time you switch them your life is going to be vanity i will never spend my time on something that does not weigh in the scale of eternity i will never waste my time it has nothing to do with me being a preacher you will never see me sit down 
gossiping about people, talking about another man's ministry, tearing down people. That's not my business. There is an urgency. The king's business requires haste. There is a lot. I have, I have too many things on my mind to do. There are souls to save. There are sick bodies to heal. There are devils to cast out. They must fly out of people's bodies into where they came from. There are lives that must be changed. There are impartations that must happen to people. I occupy my life doing that. There are songs to write. There are visions to bring. There are revelations to bring to the body. There's too much to occupy me. To waste my life in bitterness and anger and all of and this this competitive thing people do around please get out of that thing occupy don't let satan give you a job that god did not give you are we blessed oh so teach us to number our days i want you to leave this place tonight with a new paradigm about life this is a better revelation than just legalistically trying to tell people stop this, stop that, stop sin. When you give them a revelation about the reality of life, the fact that it is a gift and a trust, it will compel them to think and say, what am I doing with my life? As you go back home, go and sit down and think about your life. If you've never done it, please switch off your phone and just sit down or wake up in the middle of the night and just sit down say where am i going to okay i'm 35 i'm 45 i'm 50 i'm 20 i'm 17 i'm 10 what am i doing with my life number two the second discussion that we're going to be looking at i want to teach you an understanding about people if you want to live effectively, you must understand people. These keys I'm teaching you will make you master effective living. You will live so effectively. Your understanding about people. There are certain things you need to know about people for you to live effectively. If you do not know this, you will fail bitterly in life. Ready? Number one is what I call the fundamental principles of human relation. The fundamental principle of human relation. As far as dealing with people, we're on another subject now. Understanding about people. We've looked at understanding about life. Your understanding about people is an ideology that needs to change for you to live effectively. Write this down. I'll keep drumming it to your head till you get it. The highest psychological need, this is what I call the fundamental principle of human relations. The highest psychological need of man is the need to feel loved, the need to feel valued, and the need to feel important. Any man, Christian, Muslim, atheist, Buddhist, the follower of Baha'i, Confucius, whatever, all the religions in the world, Every man today living on the surface of the earth has an inner craving. The greatest psychological craving of any man is the need to be loved, the need to be valued, and the need to feel important. The moment you live your life violating this law, you are going to go through a lot of struggles with people. Are we together now? Um, let me use Amaka. Come, let me use you. Anybody, come. These are two people. Where are you from? Nambra State. Nambra. Where are you from? Delta State. Delta. This is Anambra. This is Delta. I need somebody from the north. North. Be sure you are from the north. Don't just stand up and. Okay. Yeah. Sam, you can come. Watch this. These people have diverse cultures, diverse ways of living. But can I tell you the truth? Embedded in every one of them, from Delta, from Anambra, from Kaduna State, embedded in every one of them, they crave for it. They will fight for it. Is the ultimate determinant 
of their attachment to people the need to feel loved the need to feel valued everybody wants to feel loved that sense of love that sense of value you know what it means to be valued i've told us but write it again to be valued means to be given an impression that you are not easily replaceable that's what it means to be valued by the time you live your life and you master degrading people and trivializing their worth you become an enemy to effective living so if i live my life watch this if every time i meet amaka all i keep doing to her is to make her feel she's of no worth are you getting the point now i keep making her feel bad I keep making her feel you are nobody you are a non-entity let me tell you something she will hate me she will fight me she will resent me every time i am coming towards her i become a reflection of pain are you getting me every time people are celebrating her and she sees joshua selman coming she will hate it she will leave that environment are you getting the point now because my presence is always derogatory to her person if i meet this guy right now and i look i say i'm richer than you you are nothing i push him away and make him look like you have to earn certain things to belong to my class and i push him away i devalue him are we together i make him not feel important the danger of that is that I will never be able to be friends with him. Some of you can never have friends and by extension husbands and wives because your attitude violates the fundamental principle of relationships. Your presence always makes people feel they are nothing. There's something about your ideology that mocks you trivialize the efforts of people. There are ladies like that every time you see another lady you cannot see what is nice there is a beautiful flower your eyes cannot see it this is a lady that is beautiful you can't see it you just look and say kai is this shirt iron or not why must your life tilt towards devaluing people that sense of cynicism is destroying your potential for effective living you must train yourself to always make people feel loved when I come to Sam and I say, Sam, I love you. You are a great person. I need you to survive. I won't harm you. With words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. And when Sam is trying to say, ah, no, I'm not qualified to be to your class. I say, Sam, if there is nothing that is common to all of us, we were all made from dust. There is a common ground and i love you you don't need to do anything to end my love i appreciate you i know you are growing and i make sam feel important when he sings i say sam there is an anointing on you i know i'm anointed but i cannot but acknowledge the grace upon you do you think sam will want to be around me because anytime he's around me that sense of value is on there are many of you brothers you have destroyed the lives of sisters because every time you see them you are, your, your mouth is like a razor blade you tear people down Kai this girl true true let's tell the truth she's not fine Kai you may be laughing as if you you are fine see it there are brothers like that and some are, are, are audacious this is a lady who is trying to gather herself what like a broken plate her emotional her em, the emotional self-worth of her of her person is fragile she's gone through a family that did not believe in her now she came to koinonia or to any um congregation of god's people and she's hoping she will find a place where she can heal and be strong and one arrogant carnal brother now comes to smash that thing on the ground and says i'm telling you to your face you are anointed oh i won't deny that one but find it now you have you have no. thank you if that is part of your life 
you are not living effectively because the reason why somebody is dying is because you are alive and God is watching God is watching you cannot come and destroy God's precious creation are you getting what I'm saying now yeah never make people feel bad when you are there no you live effectively when you understand this component of people sisters may God give you a husband who thinks like this somebody who you come back home and he can appreciate you when you cook he doesn't look and say why is there four meat I thought you used to put five say no I thank God I just came back from somewhere and my husband's wife beat him I thank God for a woman like you never giving me headache and she's saying I'm sorry I shouted at you that day say no we are humans not that you're a bad man you say yes you shouted no if you understand people let me tell you you will become a people magnet it will be like charm you become desirable by even your enemies because you have sustained the component that attracts people the, the excellency of your ideology is such that everyone wants to be like you why is everybody running away from you it may be because there is something about your life are we together now you think they are running away because you are poor not necessarily trust me not necessarily there is something about your life that violates their sense of self-worth I need you to serve. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. Very important. Bless you. Bless you. You greet people. When you come, you greet people. They don't just come and say, Apostle, how are you? Say, hey, I'm fine. Courtesy. Are we together? The highest psychological need of man is the need to feel loved, the need to feel valued, the need to feel important. The second thing you need to know about people to live effectively, ready? You must be aware of the inconsistencies and the ever-changing nature of man. Oh, I teach you wisdom tonight. Be aware of the inconsistencies and the ever-changing nature of man expect people to change expect people to change whether for the good or for the worst if you do not factor this you will die of hypertension as you live in your life <laughs> hmm. expect people to change factor this as you deal with people how many people come back with shock? I used to know this lady when she was nothing. Very humble, very loving. Now because she bought BMW X series, now she's arrogant. Expect people to change. Incorporate it so that you are never shocked. There are few things about people that surprise me because I factor it. There are people who used to greet me years ago. They will see me and greet me. But now I see them and you see there's this unconscious, I'm also a man of God now. And I just see them as I expected it. Carry your wahala. There's one song, owner of evil load. Carry your load. Now, I don't mean that, but, <laughs> but I mean, come on. I reject any load that God didn't give me. Carry your wahala, your mindset, and your village, whatever, go with it. I don't want trouble. Our not understanding that change is something to be expected, even in people, is what surprises us. So, as at the time you ask the lady out, she was a charming sleeping beauty lovely lady she would greet you it was because she was not exposed now some exposure has come and one day she challenges you and you say me when did you change if you don't factor it you will die like mere men how how many times do we expect people to remain the way we've always known them let me tell you if you want to live effectively incorporate this people are inconsistent they are ever changing somebody will say i love you today tomorrow he will say crucify him let it not shock you factor it and you will be free so that if your best friend today turns and stabs you at the back 
I, 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 some, some years ago, I managed one issue. One guy liked one lady, one good Christian lady, and there was one middleman who was trying to process the whole relationship. And in the process of trying to uh, do the procession, I don't know how the thing worked, and the guy started, you know, was possessing his canine for himself, and so on and so forth. And he found out that they were spending time together, and the returns that would have come from the whole, I mean, the guy was not, nothing was happening. And at a point, he just said, look, this lady says she doesn't like you long and short. I've just been afraid of telling you, but now see it as hot as it is. And then a few weeks, they were all going out. And then, of course, you can imagine how that relationship too will end. Praise the Lord. But the idea is that when was the last time some of you, listen, as you are sitting down right here, you are bitter and you are depressed because people changed. Your father changed when his salary came, when his arrears of 10 years came. No more prayers. Remember when people used to come and pray? They forced you to wake up in the night and do night vigil. You killed everything flying around your house till that money came. When it arrived, your father became himself. He apologized to the family. If I've offended anybody, if that's what is stopping the money, I apologize. And you were convinced, my goodness, daddy has changed. All of a sudden, the money came and he found out there is no change that has happened. Listen. Learn this about people and you will win. The inconsistencies and the ever-changing nature. Man, the only thing that God guaranteed about man is that he will change. People change when they are under pressure. That's why, let me tell you something. I say this thing especially because we are predominantly young people. When you see somebody, that thing you call love at first sight, be careful because if you say you love me have you seen me when i'm angry have you seen me when i'm hungry do you know whether i snore do you know whether i'm dirty when you say you love me it means you love everything about me oh i love you i love you calm down my mother is a witch i love you i love you like that calm down our our refusal to understand people listen I'm giving you wisdom that will guarantee your reigning. You will live effectively. Know that people change. Are you getting what I'm saying now? How many pastors expect their subordinates not to change? And they say, I know you. You are like a son to me. You came into this church as an arm robber. See what God used my anointing to do in your life. And you are the very person who wants to divide my church into half. <laughs> people must change. For the good or for the worst. I have factored this in my life. Let me tell you, there is almost nothing anybody around me does that surprises me. I may just be alarmed. What kills people, what causes high blood pressure is the shock. The shock. I didn't expect this person to change. Come on. <laughs> I give you a key that will make you live effectively. Are you learning this? When you expect people to change and you factor it, you are never surprised. That means when you are designing your life, you design it incorporating the fact that people can change. That way, you will never trust any human being above God, no matter what they tell you. I will fall inside the well for you. I will, a train will kill me for you. You are talking nonsense. Let an arm robber knock the door. You will see the ever-changing nature and the inconsistencies of people. There are pastors that before they got money, they were preaching certain messages. Is that true? When money came, business class, first class, five-star hotel. Ah! They said, so life can be lived at a higher level. And that thing altered their messages. And the members say, Kai, I'm disappointed. Don't be disappointed. People change. Walk out with this today. And you can shake hands with your best friend who stabbed you at the back. And say, I know I offended you and you laugh. You say, I've learned to factor in the ever-changing nature. So when a guy walks to you, somebody who says, if I don't marry you, just come and carry my dead body. And two weeks later, he says, I'm not doing again. You will start asking him, what happened? What is on your head? People 
change. So you factor it in your heart. Listen, this is the antidote to consistent disappointment. I will give you a job. What level are you now? 400 level. I promise you, I'm now the DG of this and that. And then you come after that time and say, even your father have not given him a job. Talk more of you. Walk out of this office. And you say, ah, ah. All the while, when they are prophesying in miracle service, you never drop prayer requests of job. Because to you, you think it's a done deal. That man promised me. And we are saying, don't put your strength in man. You are not hearing. Until he sends you away, you will rush with the prayer request. And come and drop it. Oh God, a job. Listen. I will never trust man above God. Never. I don't care what my father, your father may let you down. Your mother, your best friend. What's the other part? But Jesus. That's right. Your boss. Your lecturer. Your project may let you down for oh, Jesus. Your certificate may let you down. Your husband may let you down. Nigeria may let you down for oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Understand the inconsistencies and the ever-changing nature of men. This is the key to not living in bitterness. I, I love this person so much and he went behind me and stabbed my back. Factor it and rest. Jesus never said on the cross, disciples, where are you? You left me. He didn't have time for that. John, thank you for coming. Take care of my mother for me. He never woke up and said, you, Peter, you, uh, um, Nathaniel, Nathaniel, you that I saw you close to a tree. No, that's what many of you do. <laughs> Number three, under understanding people. You must understand what I call the motivation of the natural man if you want to live with people you must know what motivates the natural man and i want to tell you now there are three things that motivate the natural man fear greed and self-centeredness factor that as you live with people the natural man is only driven by three things one fear two greed three self-centeredness If you don't know this, you will be deceived. The concept of celebrity really does not exist. People only celebrate you to the degree to which they found something in your life that is valuable to them. The day they don't find it, they will dump you for the next thing. The natural man is motivated. Friendship in the world, fraternities and associations are ultimately motivated by fear, by greed, and by self-centeredness watch this i taught the school of ministry three kinds of people with respect to there are three categories of people in life with respect to relationships and let me just bring it out and teach us watch this the first category of people that you will relate with in your life are those who don't love you or love you believe in you clap for you only because of what you carry not who you are they don't love you because of who you are they love you because of what you have that they need so desperately so your presence represents the availability of that thing so they keep loving you for the sake of what they want are you getting what i'm saying now when you see an anointed man and you run around him and say you are anointed you really do not love him. You only love what his presence brings in your life. The day, I was telling the school of ministry students, the day we do two koinonia services and you don't sense any anointing, you sense the service go bad. Many of you say, I said it. Hey, the charm, the charm has scattered. How many, listen, 
how many of you seated here if i'm preaching right now and in your presence a charm god forbid but let's assume that i'm carrying a real charm and it just falls out here let me tell you some of you who shouted i love you joshua selman you are my father you are my mother you are my uncle you are all of this at once at once you are the ones who go and call the police and say something is wrong let's let's join the president in fighting corruption <laughs> in nigeria Ninety percent of the people who will come to your life, who will love you and call you names, only love what you carry, not you. If you are not aware of this, the crowd will deceive you. When men clap for you, they are clapping for what you carry that they need. Even if you still have it, the day they don't need it, you will dump it. Look at what we have done for Nitel. Nitel that labored for Nigeria for many years. Look at what we have done to railway. Look at what we have done to typewriters. Look at what we have done to cafes. Look at what we have done to Nokia 3310. That's an example. There was a time that represented our obsession. It's the same thing you will do to your Android device in the next 10 years. It's the same thing you will do to your tab. You will throw it away. Young children like this don't even know what a typewriter is. Whether electric or manual, they don't know it. Are we together? Yeah. So when you see people celebrating you, don't get carried away that they're admiring you. You say, I'm a superstar. Joking. Joking. You are only a commodity that is desperately needed. And people are leeching on you to eat their pound of flesh while they can. For as long as what you carry is needed by them, they will keep loving you. The first category of people you meet many of us are under deception right now that's what i teach the leaders i hear many of you come and greet and, and, and i'm not saying you should do it oh i want to thank my father apostle joshua selman and i'm just looking at you while you are saying it i want to appreciate the head of department prayer band and everybody shouting oh the day you try to get people filled with the holy spirit and you lay hands and lay your legs and nothing happens they will start saying this department is like we're backsliding the, the prayer the anointing on this department is not as strong as it used to be before. Gradually, gradually. Listen, when you know this, you will celebrate people, but you will learn to love yourself because ultimately you are your biggest fan. At least you are the one that trusts yourself. By the time you stop loving yourself and allow people to love you, the day they leave, you will die of loneliness. Job was left alone. And he said, I know my redeemer leave it all. I've lost everything. But I will love myself. Many of us are here right now. How many of you started fellowships and started groups? Or maybe were pastors of fellowships. And as at the time you were working with the people, most of the people you were grooming and building were not spiritual people. But now all of them have revelation. And everybody pushes you away and you are feeling disappointed. There's no throne for you again. My brother, save yourself headache. I'm giving you freedom. Go and find a way of motivating yourself and keep loving God. For as long as people see something in you that they want. I asked the school of ministry students a question and I'm going to ask you to prove that the love of man is sensual and carnal. How many of you tell me the name of two imbeciles you can remember? Ready? Ready? Those are the ones that have nothing to offer to you. You can't even remember their face. When was the last time when you visited them in charity? You only visited them to show the world you are doing well. You are all of that. They poured saliva on you. Thank God. How long can you endure that? You just endured it for the moment. That's to prove to you our love is principally self-centered. Number two. The second category of people you will meet in your life are those who do not love you don't confuse this the first category they love you they celebrate you but the motivation is for themselves the second category they don't love you they don't believe in you but because there is an enemy they have to confront 
and they need your cooperation to destroy that bigger enemy they will come into a momentary partnership with you to help them fight that bigger enemy when the enemy is defeated they return to themselves are we together a funny example during crisis post-election violence or religious crisis how many of you love people that smoke ego how many of you love people that do this but the moment there is crisis what happens because those guys are the ones who will put the headband and go to fight for christians you now motivate them and say my children go <laughs> do you love them no do you believe in them no but there is now a bigger enemy you don't care their church in fact sometimes you even give them some money and say hey, take minerals you know what they'll do with that money but you are saying take minerals right and you tell them please as you are protecting come around my house make sure that everything is working well do you love them no do you believe in them you have warned them two weeks before the crisis they should not come near your house you will shoot them if you see them now because you are afraid that a bigger enemy will kill you you are now using them momentarily to help you fight that bigger enemy and afterwards you will hate them back when you want to move to a new place a new house you want to find out are there christians there now you may hate catholics you may hate anglicans you may hate pentecostals but because you want to be at least in a place of safety you now say are they christians you don't know what, what they believe if they say your neighbor is a christian the other one is a christian you say ah i'm happy immediately you enter that problem has been solved now you hear this guy praying in the night you say mr man i'm here I will warn you, you it's your church that prays like that continue you see that the difference has come you needed them momentarily do you understand what i'm saying now how many people come into partnership with you just because they want to fight a bigger enemy i've seen people who don't love me they don't believe in me they many of them may have said a lot of things about me but when certain inevitable diseases came upon their lives oppressions they saw people appearing day and night and telling them you would die they tried everything they would do right and then they would now come and you see them say man of god honestly kai may god bless you you are doing a serious work and i can discern that these people they will be the people to stab me but because there is a bigger enemy they need to come into partnership with my anointing and solve the problem after which they return back to their mode if you do not know this about people you will be deceived you will suddenly see your enemy at peace with you he's at peace with you because there is a bigger enemy learn this and be wise are we together the third category of people that you will meet in your life are those who will love you for who you are they will die with you they love you more than your money they love you more than your anointing they will be the last sets of people to give up on you Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. I told the school of ministry students yesterday and they were shocked. If you find 10 of these people in your life, you are the luckiest person who has lived. Don't answer it now. Answer me when you are 60 years old. If you find 10 of this third category of people, like Ruth to Naomi, who will say your God will be my God. If you fail, I fail with you. If they mock you, they mock us together. You may never find those people. I pray for you. May, may that person be your husband or your wife. Because if, if that, that category, have you not seen husbands that left their wives when there was trouble? There was one man who gave birth to six children. He was looking for a boy. First, twins, girls. Second, twins, girls. He said, let's try again. Third, twins, and he ran away because he could not find. I mean, it was on news. They had to look for him and see him standing as if he was not the one responsible for the children that's what people do a man can be that self-centered to run away from his own children and his own wife if you learn these three things i shared with you you have mastered people maybe i'll just talk on one more area and then we'll round up this i may stop here and we'll continue um the next time your understanding about failure mm. make sure you get this 
you must have an understanding about failure about setbacks about challenges for you to be able to live effectively ready right let's fly on your path to success failures challenges setbacks are inevitable write it down on your path to success you must fail you must have challenges you must have setbacks if you do not know this you will be discouraged you will die champions in life are not people who were not confronted by failures they are those who knew the things that i'm teaching you now your failures are doorways to lasting and sustainable success write it down your failures are doorways to lasting and sustainable success i want to change your mindset about your failures now i sense god ministering to people very personally because there are lots of people that have failed and you need somebody to explain to you what is happening in your life your failures are what the door the very door that opens you up to success is called failure that's the name of the door if you reject that door you reject success i do not know any successful man who has lived in this life who has not failed let's see what james told us james chapter 1 verse 2 and 3 write this down while they project that scripture failure is a priceless asset failure is a priceless asset nothing can buy it failure is a priceless asset everyone say it. failure is a priceless asset james chapter one we'll read two to three ready let's read together as projected one to read my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations see he's saying rejoice the same way you rejoice if somebody gives you a check he says when you fail don't cry rejoice knowing this this is why you rejoice that the trying of your faith work at what patience let's look at verse 4 it says verse 4 please but let patience have his perfect work and then <laughs> read on sorry about the media but you get the point failure is a priceless asset because it teaches you patience there is no other way to learn patience on your path to success number two failure teaches you discipline discipline when you hear people brag and they are arrogant on the path to success, just leave them. Failure will bring them to a point of discipline, I guarantee you. Failure brings humility. When you fail on the path to success, it brings humility. When you hear a man talking around, bragging, my money, my education, my this, is because they have not failed. Give them room come to meet them 10 years later and they will see you even as a millionaire and say good afternoon sir and you're like ah my brother what happened to you failure teaching men humility failure teaches you compassion for others because you have a foretaste of how hard it is right the reason why many people are quick to castigate others you are quick to look at a drunkard and castigate him. You are quick to look at a lady and say, you are a terrible lady. You are an embarrassment to everybody. It's because you have not failed. When people fail, they develop compassion for others. We do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Why? Because he was in every way like us, tempted. The only, let me tell you something about failure. Failure is a sign that you have started moving. 
to the realm of success you never fail if you are not moving failure confirms that you are moving ah let me tell you something i will never listen to a man who has not failed i don't care what you have accomplished if you have not failed you don't have a message for me you don't have the balance failure gives you balance people who have never failed are arrogant when you see somebody just comes into the anointing you hear him talk god forbid can you imagine i'm embarrassed i don't know why pastors don't have a crowd I mean, in three days, we have grown from two people to 20. Just let him continue. Don't tell him anything. Continue. You come back after one year and you say, I don't know why people will trust you today and next week they won't trust you again. <laughs> Failure is teaching him a good lesson. At the end of three years, he says, look, it doesn't matter crowd or no crowd. Serve God. Failure has taught him. Look at the transition from a pompous and an arrogant person to a disappointed fellow to one who has stepped into it Micah chapter 7 verse 8 is an encouragement for someone rejoice not over me my enemies though I fall yet I will rise again we hate failure because of the mockery that comes with it we hate failure because of the embarrassment that comes with it now listen this failure I'm talking about is not just failure caused by witches and wizards. This is a necessary and sufficient condition for you to become successful. You must fail. Rejoice not against me, oh my enemy. He says, when I fall, what will happen? Everyone prophesy to yourself, I shall rise. I shall rise. Say, when I, fall. when I fall. He never said, if I fall. <laughs> he never said, if I fall. He said, when I fall, I shall rise. He said, when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I like to see people who have failed in life. They are the ones who are champions. Failures and challenges are only indications that your current level of understanding has reached its limit. And you will need to upgrade. Hear this. Your failure in life is only showing you that the principles that you know have exhausted their validity and can no longer take you beyond that reach. Are you getting what I'm saying now? When you fail, it's a sign that what you know, what you understand, what you believe, has reached its limit meaning you will need another kind of knowledge another kind of understanding to pick you and continue with you that's what it means failures are the ultimate motivators for success oh how true nothing motivates you to succeed like failure Failing will motivate you more than counseling. It will motivate you more than encouragement. When you fail, in that cave of Adullam, like David, there was a time David ran away from Saul. You would have called him a failure when he sat down at the cave of Adullam. It was at that point, certain things began to happen in his life. Is God speaking to us? Failure prunes and edits your relationships. You never know who people are until you fail. Failure edits your relationships. It takes away psychophants from your life. It, 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 it leaves the remnant in your life who love you truly for who you are. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you something. Failure has monetary value. Failure is that needed. In itself, you can become rich by failing. There is a level to which you fail so much in life. Your failure 
becomes the testament that helps other people to jump that path and they will pay you for it. So your failures are not a waste. Remove the shame, the stigma, and the embarrassment that come with failure, but treasure the experience. Is God speaking to us tonight? Take away the shame. I know that failure comes with shame. I know what it means to organize a program and publicize and in your vision you saw an overflow but then two hours into the program that's when the 11 person comes into the meeting it may look like failure but at that point it can give you an opportunity remove the shame remove the embarrassment take away all those things but preserve the experience because the day a crowd comes you will glean from that experience to become your instrument of thanksgiving when you see preachers roll on the floor and thank god they know what god did to them when no one was watching them are you getting the point now yeah how do you deal with failure number one never be ashamed of it don't let any man make you ashamed of failure honest failure that happened on your path to success no no learn from them and rise to a realm of success learn from them you never conquer failure until you learn the lesson from it if you do not you will keep repeating it for ages you conquer failure when you receive failures listen listen to me watch this watch this let me tell you something failure is like a parcel from the gate of success to your current level a parcel contains a letter in it that letter is the secret to your continuity in that part but it comes as failure just like you send a messenger with a letter when you open it you will see in it the secret to continue your journey failure is like a compass it has in it a road map and a compass. When you get to a point in your life where you fail, check well, there is a parcel. Open it up and it will tell you turn left and you begin to move and you continue your journey. You can ignore the parcel out of shame and you never will get to the place of success. One scripture and then we'll run away. But let me just give you two scriptures. Job 14 from verse 7 to 9. The Bible says there is hope for a tree. Oh, I bring a message of hope for people who have failed. There are people who have really failed. There are some people who probably wrote jam or wrote post UME or wrote other things. There are people who may have to spill over, stay an extra year. There are those who have finished, you graduated, you paid the price, but there is no job. All these things look like indications of failure. Tonight, I want you to go to the treasure where you keep the most valuable things in your life and pick your failures and add it to your treasures. Otherwise, you are missing a lot. Don't throw your failure away. It's a priceless gem. Media, please give us Amos chapter 3 verse 12. Let me give you two scriptures. Job 14, 7 to 9 and then Genesis 50 verse 20. Remember what Joseph told his brothers. He said, you meant it for evil. But God has turned it around for my good, for the salvation of others. In other words, you wanted to sell me out of jealousy. It doesn't matter what made you fail. It may be your personal cause. It may be envy. It may be whatever. It doesn't matter. Verse 12. Okay, we have it. Now, read this very interesting scripture. He said, Thus saith the Lord. This is a message of hope for somebody tonight. As the shepherd taketh out of the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of ear. Look at this. A lion has devoured a sheep to a point that it ate the whole body. All that was left is two legs and ear. Yet the shepherd still fought to recover it. Because he still felt that there is still hope for that sheep. This is what the Bible is saying. He said in the same way a shepherd... By the time it has eaten the stomach down to everything, there is no life again. But the shepherd said, I will not give up on this sheep. This sheep can come back. Because if you can have an ear to hear the word, 
faith comes by hearing and if you can have your feet to take steps of obedience there is no situation that cannot change it says the same way a shepherd you would imagine that after a lion has devoured it that's the apex of failure at the mouth at the eyes at the heart at the lungs and the shepherd said i know that there are only two legs left and one ear that's all i need to get that sheep back an ear to hear the word of the lord and a feet to take steps if you can continue the journey and not give up you will arrive hmm. who is god speaking to tonight what brought you to give up you started very well simply because you did not see results many of you are about to give up i know that you have 10 carryovers right now you are even on probation you are on your way out you are not as bad as this but they said the shepherd will not give up who is god speaking to you have written jam for seven times everybody around you is telling you your god is not alive this your christianity thing is making you an idiot there are people who even think it is because you are spiritual that you are failing just allow god to finish what he's doing in your life when he beautifies you when he adores you when he makes a masterpiece out of you then men will know that the rejected stone while you are paying the price they will laugh at you don't worry don't hate them while you are going through the valley of the shadow of death while it looks like the sun will never shine i want you to know that if there is night there is day he says and the evening came and the morning came if you see the evening they were tied together you can't see evening without morning if you see evening it means morning is on its way coming he'll lead me and guide me to the city of papa he'll lead me and guide me to my place of destiny he'll lead me and guide me to the city of papa he'll lead me and guide me to my place of destiny listen your failure is your passcode to enter the gates of success when the gate is about to open it to say show me show me the code and you say see my scars there is a scar i didn't just come i cried i had times of discouragement i had times when i never thought the sun would shine but here i'm standing i almost gave up I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see That's what God is speaking to someone here My problems held me down Depression But he kept me So I would let go 37 years And they've told you madam Better just go and get pregnant and have a child At least Listen, change your interpretation about failure. Tonight, as you pray, thank God for your failures. It's made me wiser. It's made me better. It's made me understand people. Now I can reach out to others and say, Sam, you can make it. You are not the only one who is there. When David was in the cave of Adullam, the Bible says there came to him people who were weak, people who were in debt people who were depressed and he made warriors out of them it's in the place of your failure some of you will get your husband you will get a godly man because there is nothing to desire from you and somebody comes genuinely run away from people who show you success without failure the next time you see a great man beg him to show you his cars not his crown his cars the symbol of royalty in the school of greatness is not crown. Crown is an evidence to followers. Leaders lead with scars. They lift up their clothes and say, see my scars. There were times I was tightened for years. It looked like the heavens were closed. Nothing was working in my life. Let me tell you. 
I've told many of you about my situation. The first crusade we went for, we were few. God did great things. We were few. We were in debt. But there was an anointing. I would have given up and said, God, please. Today, you are benefactors of endurance. A product of pain. Listen. I bring a message to someone. You want to live effectively? Master the art of enduring pain until you overcome. You can weary pain. You can weary failure. Failure can salute you and say you qualify to pass. Are we together? I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep pressing on. Till my answer comes I won't give up Lord, I won't give up I'll keep holding on You went to lay hands on a sick body And they embarrassed you They drove you out of a house You went to pray innocently your word of knowledge was not correct and they drove you out they called you a false prophet don't worry you know you are real just leave they can embarrass you just go you took your CV and they saw that class and they insulted you they say all these prostitutes that roam around university and buy certificates no problem just leave a day will come it will be a privilege for them to shake your hands are you hearing what I'm saying listen in koinonia we don't run away from people who have failed this is a place where there are pastors who run away from people who fail when a drummer cannot play drums well he says drive this guy out of my church go and look for somebody in lagos who can play and then bring the person right there are pastors who cannot train people who have failed to become great men of god we want ready-made great leaders are those who can endure and make wonders out of failures hallelujah there are all kinds of people you would have thought they would fail right here in koinonia there are people who have gone through things that it looks like the morning will not rise i'll never forget one of our own here mama i remember when he was disowned by his family on account of his faith disowned completely they drive you and say does it go live your life I remember him coming and smiling but today look what God has made out of his life and on the that failure today has become an instrument for his anointing that failure today has become an instrument of his grace sister you don't have to give yourself cheap because of failure go through it pass through it there are some cops you will never pray them away from your life I promise you master or father if it be thy will take this cup off me and god says uh -uh, you must drink this one if you want to stay near me you must drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism there are some things you can never pray away you pray for grace to pass through them isaiah 43 verse 1 and 2 fear not i have redeemed you i have called you by name you are mine when you pass through the waters i will be with you through the rivers it will not overwhelm you he said when you walk through the fire you will run while it is burning you you will walk through the fire he says i'll be with you have you walked through fire enough to have compassion for people that's the reason why when i come in and i see people seated outside I, I, I see people standing in the rain. My heart is grieved because I know that I do not even, based on human parameters, I should never be trusted with people like this. I don't just walk around bragging and saying, this is the man of God. All of you shift. You came late. Sit down outside. It's, no, 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 no. It touches my heart. Many times you see me sit down and I bend my head. Many people don't know there is a very soft side to me. Many times I'm fighting tears. When I see what God is doing, I come for the miracle service and the testimonies from one region over the other. I know where God brought me from. If I never failed, I would have been an arrogant person, not with the kind of anointing. I had to fail to manage this kind of anointing. It takes failure 
to have this kind of anointing and still respect people. Are you getting what I'm saying? The reason why there are many young ministers moving around, bragging and moving. Just don't try to pray for them. Just leave them. If it is that gate, I promise you, you must pass through the door of failure. Expect people to laugh at you is normal. They laugh at you as a consolation to their failures. Because they have refused to move forward. Whenever they see you trying, they are intimidated. So when you fail, it's a comfort to them. And so they will amplify it so that they can derive joy that it is not doable. But when you smash that record, them together with the world will stand in ovation. The reason why you reward great men is not just their result. You, they are testaments of endurance. They have gone through what people have never gone through. If I never failed, I would not know how to fast. There are times in my life I fasted dry for days because I needed to knock on the doors of heaven. It's not just that I just love God. Situations push me like the cave of Adulam. We are going to pray. You want to live effectively? You must have an understanding about the gift of failure. The gift of life, the gift of people, the gift of failure. Listen, I want you to go back home and strangely thank God for the gift of failure. Some of you, the only, nobody knew that you would humble yourself and come to church because you used to take first position in secondary school. When you entered 100 level, you were bragging around. Five carryovers, bam. Two carryovers, bam. Oh God, I need you. And you came. Your failure has brought you to a point. Let's look at Genesis 50, verse 20, and then we'll just pray. I know our time is gone, but this is a very important message. I have one more, but we'll take that another time. Your understanding on greatness and success. Genesis 15, verse 20. This is what Joseph told his brothers. Look at me. This is what you will tell everybody mocking you today when you succeed you don't have the evidence to talk to them now don't bother defending yourself let them call you names but joseph told his brothers he said but as for you ye thought evil against me but god meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive sister your disappointment is because there is a mantle upon you it's not beans to be a woman of God. That guy walked out on you. Everybody insulted you. Just continue loving God. A day will come when somebody runs to you and says, Mama, can you imagine what happened to me? You will start crying and say, I remember this pain. I have it too. I went through it. Those who cannot counsel people are those who don't have their pain. Their compassion is the capacity to be touched with the feelings of infirmity there are others for instance who say why waste time on people why waste time leave them alone it's because you have not failed when you see us i wait after service no matter how hungry and tired i am to see people 1 a.m 2 a.m i'm responding to calls is because i know what it means to cry and nobody answer you i know what it means to turn to your father and he says i'm disappointed you don't have a future like they've done for some of you right now some of you you are sitting down on your own nobody believes in you i'm telling you koinonia believes in you i believe in you yet i don't care what is wrong in your life if you have an ear and you have two legs oh you can come back to life after the dust settles they will see a giant imagine through it all through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all. Through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus every day. That's why you see some of our mothers. Listen. You see some of our mothers get to a point where they can be passing the road and you will see a baby fall down and they will leave what they are doing and come back and you are like mommy please I have an appointment she waited 15 years before you came she knows what it means she knows the value of a child 
Are you getting what I'm saying? 15 years of mockery. They threaten her that they would throw her away. And so every time she sees a child, she's touched with that feeling. You will never be a man of God. Let me tell you, for those of you who like claiming apostle, part of the apostolic ministry is that you will be passed through the pain of many people if you do not know, know it now. If you think you will wear suit and prophesy, you are joking. You will be subjected to many problems you don't have issues with because you need that pain. I've gone through too many things in my life. That's why when people cry, I am touched. I can leave anything I'm doing. There are people who ring my phone, 2.30, 3.30. Maybe I'm trying to rest or, and I see five, six missed calls and I'm tired, but I pick up the call and they say, man of God, somebody is about to die. And I remember, there was a time I was nothing. That's why when I come for koinonia, forget about all this water oh, and protocol and this is excellence. You see the way I sit down, my mind is on what I'm going to tell you. Right? If there is no pulpit, I will use, that's why you see me, I come with my notebook. You see how old this notebook is? This notebook is a treasure. If my house is catching fire, I will carry my notebook, my laptop and my phone. Everything should burn into ashes there. Yeah. Because failure has taught me what is important in my life when i failed the truths in these books were the things that brought me back are you hearing what i'm saying now it's easy for you to see what god is doing now to see the wonders and think that's how i started no there was a time i prayed for sick bodies and nothing happened are you getting me there was a time i didn't see any vision people were claiming they were seeing visions i knew i cannot tell lies and so i waited there was a time people were running and God said, you stay. You can't run the way they are running. Someone saw me and said, man of God, what is a car? What is this? I told the person, if you go through what I've gone through, you will not have meaning for these things. Believe me when I tell you this. What have you gone through that has made you wise? Age does not necessarily bring wisdom. Failure can accelerate your wisdom a thousand times. There is a way you fail your way to wisdom. So people say, God, where are you? But when you get to a point where you say, Lord, let me tell you in advance. If nothing in my life ever moves forward, I cannot stop thanking you. When Satan hears that is a nightmare because you have worried him. You go to the hospital, they check you and they say the BP is still there. Oh, the BP, in fact, is even worse than it was the last time. You say, no problem. Lord, I thank you because I'm alive. I know that you gave me a word. Your Bible, your word says, by your stripes, I am healed. You tested yourself, SS or AS, and they say the marriage cannot hold. And you go and check it again. And you come out and you sing before God. And you thank him. Do not get into this lifestyle that many people live. I hate complainers. It irritates me. I, I, I cannot, I cannot, I honestly cannot stand it. When I stand around people who are naggy and complaining five minutes, they are talking about something, somebody, somewhere. I run away from those people because they have the ability to destroy my progress. They are not bad people, but they are violating a spiritual law for advancement and I intend to move forward. So God helps you. He gave you 10 naira to buy a tie. And you leave the tie before God and say, Lord, this is your faithfulness. I never imagined I would get a shirt. Now you have added a tie for me. He adds a tie clip and you say, Lord, I just noticed that you added a tie clip. And God said, what sort of person are you? You mean you are doing this to me? Let him have a greater supply. And he gives you a shoe. And you say, Lord, who am I? Who am I? I asked you for a palm sandals and you gave me a shoe. I'm grateful. And while you are saying that, people will look at you and say, you are thanking God for a tie and a palm sandals. Are you stupid? What about the admission? What about the job? How long will you marry? Or will you stay before you get married? You are 37, are you aware? You say, I'm aware of that. Keep that one aside. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the fact that I started a small shop and people are coming to eat. I know that my desire is that I will have a restaurant in the future. But for this small shop, two people came today and ate. As a pastor, 
you are crying and asking God for members and seven people come and you don't just yell your anger on all of them and shout at them but you say Lord I thank you because these people who are coming are not yet members these are my leaders and so I will train them and I will be serious my faithfulness with seven people will bring a crowd I remember our first crusade we were very few a handful of people God did great things but we were very few but I remember thanking the Lord for it we could not even afford a video camera but we thank God for it do you realize that for some of you this is the word of the Lord to you tonight you have allowed ingratitude listen God knows we are humans brothers and sisters I taught us last week it is true that the vicissitudes of life have a way of pushing a man to a point where you are so overwhelmed I know I know that you need to pay the school fees of your children I know that nobody sponsors you I know that you have HIV and the antiretroviral drugs are beginning to fail I know that the infirmity has remained there I know that the devil has attacked your family. There are families here that have come from different places. They have come literally as whole families to come and cry before God. I understand. I will be a fool to deny the presence of that. We are humans. It's okay to be human. I taught us last week. It's okay to cry. It's okay to express your pain. But remember. Remember the things that he has done in your life not the things he has not done if there is one testimony in your life it's a sign that more are coming if god gave you one testimony remember david when he killed the lion and killed the bear when he stood before goliath he went to the archives of his testimonies and said the god who gave me the lion the god who gave me the bear that same god will deliver me that's how to confront challenges in life. You look at your body and they tell you you have fibroid or ovarian cyst and it's increasing. Yes, you are, you are going through pains and you are bleeding. But you say, I remember there was a time I used to have a wound that would not heal and the power of God healed it. The God who healed that will do the same for me. Please, I'm teaching you how to frustrate Satan. Don't let the devil have a toll on you. Don't let the devil mark you for ingratitude. When the devil marks you for ingratitude, he will keep orchestrating events in your life that will keep you angry, complaining. Do you know how many people die of high blood pressure and hypertension? And all of those things are caused by frustration. That you give God thanks. God gives you a job. While you are rejoicing, they suddenly call you and say, sorry, something has happened. Um, we may not be able to take the people again. And you've gone to testify in the house of God. And you turn back and say, Lord, you are faithful. I give you praise. Pastor Jakes always says he's a faithful God. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. Your situation irrespective. He is good. Everybody say God is good. Say it. God is good. Look your challenges to the face and say God is good. Say my God is good. Yes. My God is good. My God is good. I don't know about yours but my God is a good God. My God is a good God. I'll never forget one time when a car hit me many years ago. I ran to go and buy, was it Gary or Chinchin or something? And 10 naira was about to take my life. I think it was Gary or something. I wanted to hurriedly soak it and help myself in a bit to cross back. The devil just orchestrated it because he knew that there are millions of lives that must be changed and blessed. And he just came and the car, it was, I was, I was in the middle of the road. I didn't know what to do all i had was there was sound of a break and there was it was as if i was dreaming i just saw myself at the other side of the car and i had people shouting hold him hold him they said if they don't hold me i'll stand up and i'll be mad 
I just looked at them. I looked at my garage there. I picked it. I told them. I said, give me. Yes. I said, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm okay. That night, my leg, there was, it, it swelled up for days. There was intense pain. But God is my witness. I said, I have met death and I overcame. That's why I don't fear death. I've gone through too many things in my life. I've slept on speaker. I've slept on amplifier. I've, I've, come on now. Muimaka Sujada Muimaka 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 Sujada Muimaka Muimaka Ninaimaka Sujada Lord I give you I give you I give you the highest praise I give you I give you, I give you the highest praise. I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise. Very soon I'm going to give us room. About 10 minutes. And it's going to be exclusive expressions of gratitude. It's going to be you alone. I know you came for a miracle service. But father, mother, brother, sister, you're going to forget about whoever you came with. I don't know how you are going to express it, but I'll give us room shortly. You are going to begin to count your blessings and say, my God, was it not just last month I had an accident? I never gave you thanks for it. Lord, I'm, I'm grateful. I started small, but see what you have made out of my life. Lord, we started from two members and now we are 35. I thank you. I thank you. When a situation overwhelmed me, I did not know that morning will come, yet you have kept me. That it has become 20 years. I remember when they said I had a heart disease, for instance. Oh Lord, see what you have done in my life. They said people die in our village. They don't get to 20. Now I am 60 years. I give you thanks. Expressions of gratitude. We forget many times. We forget. We are asking God for more. Lord, do more for me. But you are alive. But you are healthy. You go to the hospital and see people hanging their legs. Hanging their legs for six months. And you hear them singing praises. Day and night with their legs hanging. If you can be grateful. Not just tonight if you make it a lifestyle i guarantee you there is no arsenal of hell against you that will prosper you will you will you will thank your way to the throne you will march through your challenges through thanksgiving until you get to the throne it's an unbeatable secret of greatness i thank god all the time i thank people all the time gratitude a simple but powerful secret that opens the heavens for a man. Hallelujah. Every, everywhere that I go, everything that I do, I'll hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my testimony. I'll hear him sanana. I'll hear him go by Gajena. Abba Mama Kide. Yes, who Help me, Sam.
next 10 minutes you alone with your maker lift your voice and cry in whatever way you can and say my god i give you thanks my god i give you thanks go ahead you and your maker for the next 10 minutes for the next 10 minutes cry before him for the next 10 minutes that you have won only you alone are worthy lord we magnify your name thank you jesus protector redeemer provider defender announcer lifter sustainer we thank you we thank you that the council of darkness has not prevailed over your people we thank you for the miracles we thank you for signs for wonders for food for shelter we thank you for your faithfulness for exalting our heads like the horn of the unicorn we thank you for miracle jobs we thank you we thank you we thank you thank you for our families oh god you have been good oh god you have been good Three more minutes, give him thanks. Three more minutes. us to thank God in one minute thank God in one minute for ENI and Koinonia I'd like us to thank God for the awesome things he's doing let's tell him we are grateful people for giving us a platform where the sick can be healed where lives can be transformed go ahead and thank him Lord we give you thanks
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We are grateful people. We are not ashamed to let the world see that you are the mysterious factor behind our advancement. We are not ashamed to declare to the world that you are our sustainer, defender, protector, our hope, our anchor. We have no other God. We have no other place. You alone, O God, deserve the glory. of grace and the anointing if it ever embarrasses you to thank God then you will never see his glory if you are ever ashamed and so conscious of your reputation you are so conscious of your emoji man of God I'm a great this and that all those things are nonsense when you come before his presence you throw them aside say faithful God For the things you have done And the battles you have won Only you are worthy of our praise We magnify your name For the things you have done And the battles you have won Only you Magnify your name for the things you have done and the battles you have won. Only you are worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Psalms 107. I already sense the power of God. We'll just read this and go straight into the ministrations. Psalms 1. Oh, 07 we're going to read verse 6 and then we'll read 28 to 30 I want to show you another mystery two mysteries one is gratitude the second listen is a mystery I've seen this thing many times in the Bible I want you to read it one to read stop just the A part one more time It says, then they cried unto the Lord. There is a mystery when a man cries to the Lord. I used to think it meant just lifting your voice and be loud. Until God opened my eyes. Every time you see them say in their distress, they cried unto God. In their distress. Crying unto God is more than talking. Crying unto God first starts with a revelation. That Lord, if you don't help me in this issue, I am finished. It's a revelation. For as long as you have options, you will never see God arise in your life. Until you exhaust all your options. And you come to a point where you say, Lord, they gave me the drugs in the hospital. But I acknowledge that is crying unto God. That you say, Lord, you are my priority. If you don't give me a husband, I cannot get one. If you don't give me a job, there is no job for me. Crying to the Lord is more than just saying, Oh God, help me. Blind Bartimaeus cried. And this was his cry. Thou son of David, or not thou miracle worker. I know you. I know your power. Will you pass me by and leave me in my distress like this? I'm blind. God I've heard about you that you are the God who can wipe the tears of people I've heard about you that
that you are the one who makes the barren to sing. I've heard about you that you are the one who raised Job back. I've heard about you. It says they cried unto the Lord. Whenever you are in trouble, stop discussing. The key is to cry unto God. We have prayer requests here. Many of us are standing trusting God to touch us. The key tonight is to cry unto God. And the Bible says he delivered them out of their distresses. Verse 28. 28 very quickly. One more time. Let's read. One to read. Again, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And what did he do? He bringeth them out of their distresses. Next verse. He maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof, the waves that are killing you, that looks like you will not survive. He says God has the ability. There is something he can tell that trouble. It must hear his voice. Next verse. He says then, as a result, they are glad because they be quiet. So he bringeth them where? Unto their desired heaven. Listen. God knows your intentions. God knows your desire. He has the ability to bring you to where? Your desired heaven. But the key, after gratitude, you are authorized to cry. To cry to the Lord is not an embarrassment. When you cry, you are saying, Oh God, let your goodness and your mercy speak. At this point, it's not because of what I have done. At this point is, if it is with my intellect, if it's with my money, if it's with my connection, I have failed. I cry to you in my distress. In the next one minute before I minister, we are going to cry to God. Listen, I told you crying to God is a revelation. A revelation that acknowledges him as your only source. Tonight you are going to say, Lord, you are the only one. You are the only one who can heal me. I know this. And tonight I cry to you. The Bible says he can calm the storm. He can calm the storm. Oh yes, he can. Lift your voice and cry to your maker. Thou son of David. Let your goodness and your mercy speak over me tonight. Pray. Lord, there is nothing new about my situation. You have done it before. The Bible is full of records of your faithfulness. How you parted the Red Sea before people. How overnight you turned the captivity of men and women. Pray, Lord, I don't know how you will do it, but I know you can do it. They cried unto the Lord in their trouble. He said, call upon me in the day of trouble. Cry to the Lord. My rent has expired. I'm not working. I have no idea. But I cry to you. I have multiple carryovers. I don't know what will happen to me. But I cry to you. Thou, O oh God, the lifter up of my head. The one who is able to change my story. I've not come to an idol. It is within your power to help me. Oh, thou Ebenezer, arise for me. You are my Ebenezer, the helper of man. God can help you. Listen to me. God can help you. God can help you. They cried unto the Lord in their distress. Cry unto the Lord and watch what he will do in your life. Don't give him options. 
don't give him options lord you are my only source i cry to you pray my only hope of entering into my desire some trust in horses some trust in chariots but we will trust in the name of our god Lord, step in to the impossible. Do the impossible. Lift your voice and sing inside and outside. No. Step in. Do the impossible. Do the impossible. Come on, let your faith rise tonight. No. Lord, step in, Lord, step in to the impossible. To the one more time, Lord, step in, Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is healing a lady right now. Please check yourself and you just come out to testify before we continue. I'm seeing a lady. You came here with severe pain on your neck. Check it now. Check it now. The Lord is touching you. The Lord is touching you. I'm seeing an elderly man in this place. Um, you've been having pains towards the lower abdominal region. The Lord has just touched that man right now. He's an elderly man. I don't know where that person is. Please testify. Check yourself. And immediately you find out you are healed. Make your way to the front. Make your way to the front. God is touching people right now. I don't know who I'm seeing an ear. God is touching someone's ear. It's like, I don't know if it's an ear issue. But God is touching it right now. God is touching it right now. God is touching it right now. Please check yourself. And make your way right now. Right now, let's just have two or three of those people. God is touching it right now. Right now. Doing a miracle for somebody. Um, I'm seeing somebody that has... I don't know if it's... Um, I don't know what to call it, but... It's like a serious stomach issue. It comes and hooks you. Literally. You are gasping for breath when that happens to you. It's like it literally holds you check yourself now you will find out that the lord has touched you make your way to the front very quickly you can make your way right here J miracles are happening come on give jesus praise miracles are happening miracles are happening god is touching people right now can you give jesus praise god is touching people god is touching people right now i'm seeing someone with an eye problem you see like a black object it comes and goes it's like a it's, it looks like a needle like a black object you'll be looking at people and then you will see it this has happened for a while but god has touched you right now who is that person make your way to the front right now i'm seeing someone's left leg outside in the overflow there is someone with a left leg issue left leg is like you came towards the, the, the uh, this area where i'm holding I'm seeing the power of God touch that area. Check it right now. Check it right now and confirm your healing. And make your way to the front. Check it right now. Confirm your healing. Make your way to the front. Hallelujah. Have they checked themselves? Sir? You've checked yourself? Okay, so quickly. We'll just take two or three. You can turn. Please come up. Come up. Let them come up. When you come, you can stand. Please come up, ma'am. Come up, sir. Go ahead. Just tell us quickly straight to the point. 
Praise the Lord. Uh, I have an ear issue and it normally scratch me sometimes. Okay. And I'm feeling better by Completely. Give right Jesus now. praise. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. It never returns to you in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. Please, let's celebrate Jesus. Celebrate what he's doing. For some, yes, for some years I have been experienced pain here. Pain at yes. the lower abdominal yes, region. Yes. yes. You know, I gave now, a word of knowledge yes. that there was somebody in lower abdominal region. And it's how, how about better. now? Exactly. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we declare that it is perfected. Wow, the power of God is coming on you. It's perfected right now. Never to return to you. In the name of Jesus. Please check it, sir. Check it. Check it right now. Check it. It's Check getting it. better. Yes. I'm feeling better. I'm feeling you better. will be perfected in the name of Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Give Jesus praise. Praise the Lord. For the past two weeks now, I've been having ear pain. Ear it's pain. A, it's an attack. Okay. I have cold. I have kata. So, this thing blocked my ear. I don't used to hear very well. So, now, I'm, I'm okay. Completely. Yes. Madam, what? The Lord is bringing increase for you. I'm seeing attack. I'm seeing a serious attack. Your money has gone down. Yes. Because this, this, I'm seeing this has to do with. Yes. I don't know if you sell hair or you are doing I, something. I have salon in center. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it's like an attack. This thing yes, has gone down. People are not even coming the way it used to be before yes. again. Is that true? Yes. The Lord is saying I should tell you in this miracle service, a restoration comes for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the restoration comes for you right now. In the name of Jesus, give Jesus praise. God is visiting situations right now. Visiting situations right now. Go ahead, please, quickly. I want to thank God because I've been having serious pain on my neck at times. Neck pain? Yes, okay, the lady I said with neck pain, how long? It's like, it's for months. It comes and goes. At times, it's like my entire head, my ear, it affects my ear, but... When you were speaking, I, I just turned and I felt it was gone. You felt it was gone. Hallelujah. Now, there is a lady, while they were giving a testimony, there's a lady here. You felt like a cold sensation. Something just came upon you right now. It's a miracle that God has given you. Who is that person? Come out. You are in this row. Where are you? Come. You felt like a cold sensation. Something just came over you. Come. Come. This night, God is bringing restoration. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, let your anointing bring restoration for her right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Tremendous restoration. I'm seeing a crown being put upon your head. Are you together? Are you together? I'm seeing a crown. Oh, you felt the same thing. I'm praying for you. Madam, the Lord is averting CS. The Lord is averting CS because, you see, the anointing is on you. The Lord is averting CS. I'm seeing a spirit standing by the theater. And I'm seeing that this is even supposed to destroy this baby. That they say this baby comes out and is affected. But the anointing of the spirit is upon you right now as I'm speaking. And I release the power of God right now. Let that demonic substance out of her. Now. Out of her. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere Miracles everywhere Right now Is your family here? Is the time for the visitation? Where is our family? Please come There is a whole deliverance for a family that God is doing here right now I see that family Please where is our daddy and our mommy? Please appreciate them as they come enough of the nonsense of darkness please celebrate them as they come miracles everywhere miracles everywhere lord we see miracles everywhere right now right now hallelujah sir i'm looking at you and i'm seeing a cause this is what i'm seeing as I look at you, the Lord is showing me this is a cause. Number one, it has tied down your finances completely down. This thing is so embarrassing, it has tied down everything. I don't know who is it in your family that has dreams. I see dreams of someone chasing somebody. I don't know which of your children or who now, but I'm seeing one of those people have dreams. That's their daughter. 
You see the power of God touching her. She's their daughter. She's the person with this case I'm mentioning. I'm seeing dreams. And it's like people pursuing the person. This thing started right from your family. And this is already following this lady. Because I'm seeing now that the devil wants to put fibroid in her stomach. It's starting now as pain. I, I remove that fibroid right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I cause that seed of fibroid. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm seeing this woman crying before God in prayer. This is what I'm seeing. This woman has been a defense. I'm seeing her crying before God. And saying, Lord, will you not wipe our tears in this family? But tonight, we see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. But every time they want to indicate helping you something just comes and nobody is willing to help you because i'm looking at you in the realm of the spirit i'm seeing a body but i'm not seeing a face this thing has covered your glory whoever is supposed to help you misunderstands you and for some reason they uh, they don't help again hallelujah who is adamu i'm hearing a name adamu adamu i'm hearing something that has to do with adamu Adamu, please help, help those on Adamu, I'm hearing Adamu. Who is that? Adamu? Adamu? Huh? Where is your father? The person I'm talking about, his father's name is the one that is Adamu. Huh? What's your father's son name? Adamu. Adamu? Yes. God is giving Adamu a miracle. Yes, sir. Your father, right? Where is he? In Nasarawa State. In Nasarawa State. Yes, sir. Because... This enchantment that is done against your family, enough is enough. It's part of your prayer request, right? Yes, number sir. five, six, uh, number two and three. Yes, sir. Number two and three prayer requests. Yes, sir. Look at it there. Yes, that's sir. it. Number two and number three. That's what you wrote. Lord Read it. Miracle Read it. Miracle in your family. Yes, sir. That's what I'm reading, what you are writing. And God is giving a miracle. Yes, a big miracle to Adam. Miracles everywhere. I see miracles everywhere. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Right now. I see miracles, I see miracles, miracles everywhere. Lord, we see miracles, miracles everywhere. We see miracles, miracles everywhere. Right now, right now. The Spirit of God is ministering to me. I'm seeing the anointing of the Spirit. I'm looking at a map. And I'm seeing the spirit of God going to Yola. Yola. A miracle is happening in Yola. And it's going to this lady's family. This lady, right? I'm seeing a miracle. But there are two other people. From Yola. From Yola. I see the power of God moving. Two people. From Yola. It will come like a tornado upon you. It's a miracle that God is doing right there. There is a lady's elder sister who has been barren. I'm seeing the number three. Three years. Barren. Barren. Help them. That lady is from Yolan. She's an usher. She's walking. But the spirit of God. I'm seeing is a wicked demon. This is what I'm seeing. That has been oppressing her family. I don't know if she's from Yola or not. But I'm seeing that God is doing a serious miracle. Sir. I'm going to pray for you, mommy. I will minister to you, madam. The Lord is saying I should tell you that the crying is over. The crying is over. Right now, as I speak, the power of God is coming on you. The Lord is saying I should tell you the crying is over. Right now, the angel of the Lord is pouring something that looks like oil upon your head. Pouring it right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Pouring what looks like vials of oil. Now I curse this spirit. I address you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let this family go now. 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 This curse that has tied down the family. Even the lawful captive shall be delivered. 
He said, for I will contend with them that contend with you. Right now, the power of God is touching people. I see deliverance, 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 fire. Lift your hands, everybody. Let's just interrupt this. Deliverance, fire, right now. It will start touching people at the count of three. Father, the angels of God, there are many angels in this place bringing deliverance for families. At the count of three, let that fire come right now. One, two, three, receive it. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Makaparatata. Sheketetete. Bring them out. Lekete pratata. Deliverance for families. Outside. I'm seeing the angels of the Lord go outside. Outside. The power of God is moving. It's like fire coming on families. It's like fire. It's like fire. It's like fire. It's like fire. We see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Right now. We see miracles everywhere. We see miracles. Miracles everywhere. We see miracles. Miracles everywhere. Right now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Father, where are those families you showed me in the place of prayer? That from the village. Now, I'm not one who just talks so much about village. But this one is from the village. I see an attack at the count of three. One, two, three. From the village. Those arrows back to sender. Shakatata. Leketata. Reketatata. From the village, I see enchantments. From the village, I see altars. I see covens. I set them on fire. I set them on fire. I set them on fire. They are calling your names. From the village, from the village, enchantments, witchcraft, death, outside, outside, fire is falling, what fire is falling, fire is falling from the village, speakings of death, enchantments of death. Yahweh. 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 The name above all names. Yahweh. We call Yahweh. Yahweh. I'm ready to pray for you now i didn't just leave you i need to pray for you my god there is massive deliverance going on in this place my dear lift your hands where you are an angel of the lord is touching you right now right now mama an angel of the lord is touching you he's doing something in your husband's life your husband's life there is a miracle that is happening Madam, your time for a miracle has come. Come, this woman, this woman wearing pink. No, 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 I mean, that one, the one turning back. Yes, you, madam, come. Your time for a serious visitation has come. Let's stretch our hands towards daddy. Bring her, be delivered now. I curse that spirit. Go.
Stretch our hands towards daddy and mommy. Let's pray for them. Father, this plague must stop. I saw a curse. It was looking like a hollow over your head. It follows you everywhere you go and brings bad luck to your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, it's over. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I announce a new season. I announce a new season. Mommy, the spell is broken. Broken, 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 broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, I hold your hands in the name of Jesus and I announce to you that it's a new season. You will go back and experience dramatic turnaround. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't think it will come from all the channels you are planning. Unusual sources of breakthrough. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Madam, I want to pray for you. Do you have a daughter? Is she here? One is here? I'm seeing one of your child here. Where is the person? A girl? A lady? A girl, yes. A lady, where is she? Please call her name, let her come. Daughter, where are you? Who is the person? She's wearing something like traditional dressing. Who is that? Come. This has been your desire that God will visit your family, right? It's been your desire, it's been your prayer yes, sir. that God will visit your family. Yes, sir. And tonight, God has chosen to step in. See, it's an awesome thing when the light of God turns to you. Then you know that your situation has come to an end. I mustn't call you. It's not just by word of knowledge. It's not just by word of knowledge. lady is going to vomit something I'm seeing something that looks like a snake moving in her stomach this is like I don't know if it's poison this is something that has been put to this lady I curse that devil I curse you back to hell back to hell from where you came from hallelujah mommy please stand up let me pray for you man you can stand up please I want to pray for you. God is going to bring dramatic breakthrough to your life. Please, I want you to note it. Dramatic breakthrough. It will so surprise you. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let captivity come to an end. In the name of Jesus, captivity comes to an end. I release supernatural breakthrough. Supernatural breakthrough. Supernatural breakthrough in the name of Jesus. And for you, supernatural breakthrough. Mama, I pray. The Lord told me that... The tears have come to an end. It's wiping your tears. Father, thank you for your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Remember not the former things the Lord says I should tell you. In this season, he's doing new things. He will change the heart of your husband in a way that you never imagined. He will do this for his glory. The spell of bad luck over your life is broken. Bad luck. There's something about your life that makes people hate you. It's a spirit. And there are people here. Lift your hands, everybody. I'm praying for you. Whatever makes people hate you for no reason, I want you to know that it's not normal. You will see what will happen right now. There are people here. I know that people have those kinds of things. But there are people with those things. It's like an aura on you. As I was ministering to her, the Lord said, minister to the house. Father, where are they? Right now, in the name of Jesus, let the anointing locate them. Inside and outside. That spell of bad luck. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Justina, the Lord is bringing miracles to your family. Miracles to your family. I'm seeing a lady from, is it Oka? Oka, that should be east. I'm, I'm, Oka, is there anyone from like that? I'm seeing a lady. Our minister generally will pray for the sick now, but I just want to flow. Oka, Oka, is there someone like that? Please, if you are like that, you can make your way to the front. The Lord wants me to pray for that family, my dear. You with a white hair tie. That lady, you turning back, lift your hands where you are. 
I don't know what it is that I'm seeing, but God is destroying an embargo over your life and family. Lord Jesus, I destroy it right now. In the name of Jesus, where you are standing, I destroy it by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are from there? You are from Oka? Where is that? Anambra State. Anambra State? Yes. I'm going to pray for you. You're also from there? Huh? Make your way to the front. You are from there too. Three of you. Look at me. You cannot be a victim. You and your sisters of the wickedness of people in the village. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hold my hands. Father, it must end. This must end. It must end by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. This is, this is, I'm seeing enchantment. This is, this is witchcraft to produce consistent failure in life. You and your sisters, I pray for you. Father, you are going to visit them in this season. You are going to visit them in this season. In the name of Jesus, I want to minister to you. You are from there, too. Come stand. The Lord gave me that word and said to minister to the people. As I lay my hands and minister to you, I want you to know that everything that does not represent God, uh, and everyone pursuing you in your dream and disturbing you, it must end in the name of Jesus Christ. For you, there is, there is, I'm seeing something that looks like a crown in your head. We must remove it because it's not God that put that crown. Out! In the name of Jesus Christ, that devil is a liar. Take it off of her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where is your mother, my dear? Huh? Abbey Estate. Abbey Estate. We are going to pray for you. Tell your mother that a deliverance is coming for her. Then a breakthrough. Deliverance first, then breakthrough. For the deliverance, she will see it in a dream. It's like something will be chasing her to catch her and she will see somebody who will snatch her out. Is a dream connoting deliverance. Father, visit this family. Out! In the name of Jesus Christ. You're a student here? Huh? Yes. We must pray for you so that the spirit that destroys men when they are about to finish huh? in your family, we must stop it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Glorify yourself, O oh God. I curse this spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your hands, everyone. Before I begin to minister to the sick, God is bringing deliverance to families right now. We are going to shout Jesus at the count of three. This is not just to you, but God is stepping into families. Some of you never knew that what is happening physically in your family is as a result of all kinds of things. Devils, lift your hands everybody. At the count of three, you shout Jesus at the top of your voice. And the power of God will move mightily in this place. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you step into families and end every oppression and every captivity right now i pray by the power of the holy spirit every family shakatatata, under any demonic siege my goodness the power of god is already touching people right now at the count of three let that shout be like a code in the spirit one two three be delivered now 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 altars be broken altars be broken over families over families inside and outside and those following online i break it right now every family under any spell every family that's right kappa takata bring them out shakatatata every family under any spell oh you must leave them you must leave them i speak to those spirits hear my voice in the name of jesus there is no hiding place for you you must go you must go you must go it's time for their deliverance you must go
Hallelujah. My goodness, God is doing miracles right now. God is so help that lady, please. Help them. Sisters, lift your hands. I want to pray for just the sisters. Something remarkable will happen right now. Remarkable. There is a spirit that puts women in bondage. Because when one woman is in bondage, it can affect a thousand men. There are ladies, oh my goodness. The fire of God will move, not small. Sisters, lift your hands. Lord, by fire, as the sisters cry, that spirit, that seraph, that follows ladies and causes them, visiting them in dreams, as you shout, Jesus, my goodness, I pray that those fallen spirits that will not let you go, that did not keep their original estate, they will be judged right now. Father, locate every one of these sisters right now. One, two, shout Jesus. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Those spirits, go, 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 go. Shakatatata, shapatatata. Lift your hands. There are people here strange dreams strange dreams in the night you sleep in the night and you have all kinds of strange dreams from men or women or animals coming to sleep with you or people tying your legs and you see what is happening in the day whether you believe it or not is not the issue i want to settle those things right now lift your hands lord where are these people from the dream realm from the realm of the spirit as you shout the name Jesus, anyone under this condition, some of you, that's what is responsible for masturbation. Some of you, that's what is responsible for pornography. Some of you, that's what is responsible for delay. Lift your hands. Father, those spirits that use the realm of dreams and visions and manipulate destinies, manipulate the stars of your people, at the count of three we set them on fire fire comes upon you now many guys will be affected one two three oh i bring you deliverance in the name of Jesus, I cause those spirits, causing delay. You must leave now, 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 now. Shabababa, sheketetete, kaprata katatata, sheketetetete, reketetete. Go, 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 go. Watch what they do. That spell of delay must leave. Hallelujah. Lift your voice in one minute. I'd like you to pray and cause delay from your life. In the next one minute, open your mouth and say, Enough is enough. I must move forward. Pray. Please pray. Take it seriously. It's called a miracle service. It's called a miracle service. Pray. Lord, I'm tired of delay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Prophesy. I'm moving forward. This is the ninth month. By the blood of Jesus. I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. Under this anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to shout after me. Say in the name of Jesus. Every gate and every obstacle standing between me 
and the next level by the blood of Jesus I bring those gates down open your mouth and begin to pray gates of limitations standing before me and my desired heaven gates of limitation standing before me in the name of Jesus gates of limitation standing before me and my desired heaven outside make sure you are praying pray you will return with a testimony you are praying under a corporate anointing hallelujah hallelujah say after me in the name of Jesus everything that belongs to me and is not yet in my life in this season by the power of faith I command them to manifest open your mouth and begin to pray open your mouth and pray come on koinonia everything every lifting every glory that belongs to me and has refused to manifest by the power of faith even God who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were hallelujah hallelujah say after me in the name of Jesus every legal access every claim the devil has over my life over my family by the blood of Jesus I declare that I'm free by the blood of Jesus I command my liberty I declare that the price for my freedom has been paid therefore Satan stay off my life open your mouth and begin to pray stay off my life the price has been paid by the death of Jesus every curse every yoke every spell every enchantment by the blood of Jesus pray Hallelujah. I want you to listen to me carefully. I'm doing this by the Spirit. Listen, many breakthroughs are happening to people just from this simple prayer. I wish that God could open your eyes to see the things that are happening to people. You are, this is not just your normal prayer. You are under a heavy anointing. Listen, human beings have prophetic atmospheres. The ark of God came into the house of Obed-Edom and brought him good. Jonah entered a boat and made people to be destroyed. Listen, some of you are good people, but you are carrying a spiritual atmosphere that brings bad luck to you and everybody connected to you that's what prophets sometimes will see and because they don't have discernment they call people witches and wizards they are not witches and wizards they are sincere people but they carry a spiritual climate that everywhere they go it makes certain things to happen do you understand now some of you are sincere people but you are carrying atmospheres that makes everything around your life to fail we are going to pray say after me in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus this is strong prayer this simple prayer you are saying you will see the result instantly I like you to pray and say every atmosphere 
that I carry that does not come from God and is responsible for bad luck and misfortune in my life tonight I declare let that atmosphere change lift your voice and pray seriously lift your voice and pray seriously every negative atmosphere kaparatata pray miracles are happening pray every negative atmosphere pray that brings bad luck I may be a sincere person but it brings repeated misfortunes I challenge it whether ancestral whether territorial I challenge it I change my spiritual climate by the blood of Jesus hallelujah two more prayer points and we'll pray for the sick hallelujah we are going to pray a prayer of restoration do you believe in restoration nothing is ever truly lost it only leaves your presence I like us to pray yeah that's the song everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen one more time Forget about your situation, just prophesy. Just prophesy. You may not know how it will happen. Just prophesy. One more time. Prophesy. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. All the years all the fortunes every opportunity every access that has been lost in my life by the mercy of God I command them to come back to me go ahead and pray this is a serious prayer point all the years all the fortunes all the opportunities all the access that have passed your life pray like samson pray like hezekiah pray let there be a restoration and i will restore to you the years that the canker worm the palmer worm, the caterpillar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray the last prayer point. Listen. There are spirit entities that challenge and haunt the destiny of people. In the realm of the spirit when Jesus was born certain men saw his star from the east and they started following that star and the moment they announced to Herod a king is born Herod said ah a king he said please find where he is and tell me so that I will come and worship him but his intention was to kill him you are going to pray over your destiny Please take this prayer point seriously. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. I declare that my destiny is secured by the blood. Every act of witchcraft 
that has tied down my destiny right now by the blood of Jesus release it now pray pray release my destiny release my destiny my prophetic potential release it release it Hallelujah. Prophesy after me, say in the name of Jesus. This is my year of the rain. It's a new dimension for me. I'm breaking every limitation. Say it again. I'm breaking every limitation. And I declare that in this remaining part of the year, an anointing comes upon my life that causes me to triumph that causes me to excel go ahead and pray it lord is my year of the rain an anointing comes upon my life a speedy walk by the holy ghost a speedy walk of restoration a speedy walk hallelujah we're going to do two things at the same time right now listen if there is any trace of sickness and infirmity in your body it's time for it to die are we together now are we together now please just address these people we're going to have all those people come and line up while that is happening please i beg you if you do not write anything in your prayer request please if you need papers maybe the ushers can pass it we are going to be praying on everybody's request those on facebook some of your loved ones you are permitted to switch off your switch on your phone and tell them please send in your prayer request because god is about to do something right now while you are doing that be praying in tongues everybody be praying in tongues while sick people all those who brought sick people make your way to the front very quickly please very quickly all those trusting god for healings and miracles please just line up Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be restored unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be restored unto you. The devil is a liar. He must Everything let you go tonight. That was stolen shall be restored unto you. Hallelujah. We don't just lay hands on people. I know that it takes a lot of time. But it's the way God is directing us. It's not just ordinary hand laying. It's a prophetic point of contact. Some of you are coming out for sickness. But the truth about it is that there is an oppression of darkness. Is that the mama with cancer? Okay. No, no problem. No problem. She can come. If she cannot stand, just give her a seat. Let her sit down, please. Those who are weak and cannot stand, please, you can give them a seat so that they don't collapse. The, the woman with cancer, if she, if she cannot come, just I'll minister to her. Everything that was lost. Make sure you are writing your prayer request, please. Everything that was lost. Hallelujah. All of you that are coming out, I want you to know that we are patient enough to minister to us. There are all kinds of ministries. This ministry is like a spiritual factory. It's like a spiritual workshop. It's where we dirty our hands on the job. And as I minister to us, please, I want our hearts to be open. Don't just stand watching the power of God touch people. The moment I lay hands on you and minister to you, I want you to receive. You can go back to your seat. Some of you will be under the anointing. It doesn't matter as i pray for you you don't have to scrounge i will lay hands on everybody it's going to be a quick walk it will take time please when you write your request pass it to the ushers in case there are things listen listen let me teach you how to maximize this prayer point don't just write things carelessly 
while you are writing be praying in tongues because the spirit of god will bring into your mind bring you into remembrance it may even be a matter that is not your own you heard the story of the gentleman dropped a prayer point and nine months later they are coming with twins there is nothing god cannot do father in the name of jesus i pray over your people there are powers tying down their destinies but you have put this miracle service as a prophetic platform let there be miracles go ahead all of us we can join praying in tongues while i pray for these people occasionally worship team you will help us lord we give you praise in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ look at this i don't know they can't see it on screen it's not clear this is a leg that is bent father do a miracle they didn't fix it well in the name of jesus right now let the power of god do a miracle on this leg in the name of jesus Almighty God, you know me, my Lord. You know me, my Lord. Out! Now you be God. Almighty God, you know me, my Lord. 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 Now you be God. Almighty God. Almighty God. point number two lord i take full delivery of everything you package uniquely for me tonight lift your voice i will not miss out on anything yeah. Yeah. hallelujah who brought this woman please huh? what's the issue what's wrong Chief. hallelujah we'll soon be rounding up let's just hear no 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 keep us standing what's wrong paralytic. Nice. paralyzed yes. mama can she talk yes mama for how long I paralyzed did. yes i went to the house and met she can't walk on her own she can't walk very well mama in the name of jesus christ i curse this spirit it's okay in the name of jesus mama look at me in jesus name lift your hand lift it go don't look at, just lift it put it down lift it again paralyzed hand look at this look at this Mama, clear the way for her. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk. Come. Don't hold her. Come. 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 Turn around. Turn around. Walk. Come. Come. Come on. Give Jesus it's praise. Miracles say everywhere. Miracles say everywhere. Paralyze. Miracles say everywhere. of paralysis it never returns to you again in the name of jesus you are the son that brought her 
your, she's not your mom, yes. but you brought her. Yes. I pray for you. May you never lack helpers in your life. Because you are a young man, you are not related to her. Yet you carried mama out of compassion. This miracle is because of you. I'm laying hands on you and I prophesy to you. All the days of your life may help us be around you like this. In the name of Jesus Christ. For as long as your eyes can see the sun, you will find a helper. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Celebrate mama. God bless you. You're in ministry i want you to come out I, I don't mean you want to do ministry you are actively in ministry come and stand here it's time for you to take fresh fire please if you come out and you're not a minister i'll send you back i assure you don't embarrass yourself if you're a minister and you know not just that you sense the call of god please don't embarrass yourself we are going to pray for everybody but if you're a minister come go ahead don't be afraid We're in a season of God's glory. Please listen. We're in a season of God's remarkable grace. It takes signs and wonders. Not just grammar and story. The Bible is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God. For the manifestation. Please, I'd like you to believe. I'm going to do this very fast. The Lord has instructed me. Immediately after we do that, all visitors, visitors alone. I will not lay hands on you, but I'll pray for you. And then we'll pray for the request, prophesy, and we're out. We'll do all this within the next 10 minutes so that we're done. Father, I pray. It's not by might, it's not by power. Lord, as I lay hands upon your servants, let something new, something divine, my God, I pray, activate the gifts of the Spirit in them. Activate the operations of signs and wonders. Let utterance be given unto them. Let their lives, O oh God, produce results. Results, O oh God. Results. Signs. Wonders. Miracles. By your hand. Take the fire, 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 
take the fire. 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 Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. New levels. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. New dimensions. Fresh grace. My goodness, fire is falling. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh grace. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh grace. Fresh anointing. New anointing. New dimension. Gifts of the Spirit. Vision. Three prophecies, multiplied graces. I prophesy to all of you, let it be a new season in the name of Jesus. New season, new season, new season. I empower you for a new dimension in the spirit. I empower you. Fresh grace, fresh grace. Stretch your hands towards the prayer request. Unto thee that answers prayers shall all flesh come. Please stretch your hands. It's a prophetic instruction God gave us. We have seen amazing testimonies. If there are still people left, please let them come. Let them drop it very quickly. In one minute, I'd like you to begin to pray. Lord, it's time to turn my story around. My goodness. As we pray, miracles will begin to happen to people right in the crowd right in the crowd as i'm touching the request something is happening to you something is happening i'm seeing angels lightning all over all over all over father in the name of jesus we pray go ahead and pray everyone of miracles happening in the realm of the spirit father turn these requests into testimonies the way i walk on them oh god these problems remain under our feet forever in the name of jesus christ under our feet forever in the name of jesus christ all our visitors please come out quickly if you're a visitor here
You are a visitor. This is your first time. Hallelujah. The Lord spoke to us last year. He said we should prophesy and pray over the visitors. Some of you have traveled kilometers. You have traveled from different states of this nation. Risking yourself through the night. Please make sure you come. Clear the way for them. You are a visitor. This is your first time you are coming here. Make your way to the front. Let's celebrate them. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see what I'm saying, people? The number of visitors that troop in every week into Zaria for Koinonia is getting so much. We have to find something to start doing around your regions so that we save some of you transporting yourself. Maybe we'll open a branch of Koinonia in all those places. Maybe we'll come to your village. Hallelujah. But seriously, we're trusting God for instructions for the next level. And I'm sure that very soon he's going to speak. But I perceive that very soon there's going to be a lot of expansion because of what God is doing. Hallelujah. Are you glad about that? Let's celebrate Jesus. God has brought you here. Your life will never be the same. Please lift your hands. Father, you have brought these people all the way. Some of them with burdens. Some of them coming to catch fire. I stretch my hands towards you. Kaborato shatabaladaba. Nandekele koroto suto prashia. My goodness, I see impartations happening to people. Those of you standing, I'm seeing impartations. It's like rain, rain touching people. That's what I see. These are showers of blessings, showers of miracles. I prophesy to you from tonight. Help them, help them, help them, help them, please. I prophesy to you. Step into new levels in the name of Jesus Christ. Step into new dimensions. This is Koinonia, a place of encounter. It's not just the name of a meeting. It's the name and the dimension of the operation of the Spirit. We bless you with hunger for God. We bless you with passion for the things of the Spirit. I'm praying for you. You will go back with such fire. You will go back with such passion you will not recover from. I pray that everything that has not been working in your life, let it be activated tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I welcome all of you. Thank you so much for coming. This is Koinonia, a meeting put together by Eternity Network International. We're here every Friday. Um, this is not our usual venue. Our venue is Christ Gospel Church at New Extension. But we thank you for coming. I bless you in the name of Jesus and I'm praying for you from the depth of my heart and on behalf of everyone in this ministry and the many who are joining us online that you will return with a strange miracle in the name of Jesus you will return with a strange miracle some of you even before you get home your miracles will be waiting for you some of you this night you will have dreams and encounters and the veil over your eyes will be open some of you this night god will show you what has been happening in your life god will show you direction i see god giving a lot of you direction direction for the next level you will hear his voice very accurately in the vision of the night in the vision of the night he will show you in the name of jesus christ we bless you for those of you who have never been here i want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll have your details outside very quickly and then you come and join us those of you who have been here and we have received you you can just go back to your seat with a blessing but those of you who have never been here you've not put down your name we need your names and details i want you to make your way here in the name of jesus everybody rise as we receive the last prophecy for the meeting now you be god you know I know you know me now. Nah, him be God. Oh my God. You know me now. You know Two more times. Now nah, you be God.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tomorrow morning we are off to Kogi State. We are going to be tearing down the walls of darkness. Trust God to set that territory free. Pray for us. And if you come from Kogi, stand by us and tell and let's trust God to really do something apostolic in that land in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, please, this for me, you always hear me say this. I consider this to be the most important part of the meeting because this is where everybody gets to receive the creative power of the spoken word the creative power of prophecy this is where the word of god comes into you like a drug and literally literally alters you and so i want you to receive with your heart open hallelujah please receive with your heart open in the name of jesus christ as i pray for you i want you to receive by shouting a resounding amen no more tears in the name of jesus no more tears in the name of jesus i prophesy no more tears in the name of jesus no more tears in the name of jesus no more tears in the name of jesus no more tears no more tears, no more tears in the name of jesus These hands that are lifted, I prophesy, may a supernatural anointing come upon it. Let it begin to produce extraordinary results. In the name of Jesus Christ, extraordinary results. I pray for everyone due for promotion. And every of your loved ones due for promotion. In the name of Jesus we cause the embargo stopping their promotion and we prophesy promotion there will be testimonies of promotion the power of God is touching people everyone and every family called jobless I feel like fire on my hands as I'm about to pray this please help them I feel like fire on my hands everyone represented here and every family called jobless right now in the name of jesus i release an anointing for supernatural jobs receive it receive it receive it help them please receive it receive it testimonies of jobs testimonies of jobs testimonies of jobs every delay in your life that has stopped you from entering where you should enter now the anointing that came on Elijah that he guarded his loins and ran receive that anointing right now I cause delay in the name of Jesus I cause delay in the name of Jesus everyone who has vowed that over their dead body for you to rise and your family to rise I declare that to their shame my God will lift you before them my God will lift you before them. My God will lift you before them. Everyone who says, can anything good come out of your life? I prophesy to you, in this season, God will use your life to answer them. God will use your life to answer them. I pray for you. In the name that is above all names whoever needs to come into your life in this season no let's start it this way whoever needs to go out of your life this season in the name of Jesus if their presence has been causing you pain and setback 
I break you free from them now. Wrong associations, be free from them now. Wrong relationships, we break it now. Wrong soul ties, we break it now. Wrong connections, we break it now. Wrong fraternities, we break it now. We break it now. We break it now. I command them out of your life. Out of your family. Listen. Some of our parents, the trouble in their life is because they have wrong friends they will never leave. They keep influencing them to make useless decisions. I pray for every family. Any stranger manipulating the destiny of any family through the counsel of Ahitophel, today we send them packing from their homes. Packing from your homes. In the name of Jesus. Until Samuel appeared, the destiny of Saul remained covered. Until Jesus appeared, 12 years of hemorrhage continued. Whoever must appear in your life, Whoever must appear, Magato Topata. You hear me talk of destiny helpers all the time. Your next level comes from God, but through the hands of a destiny helper. From the realm of the spirit, destiny helpers, I call you. From the north, from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west, wherever you are, locate God's people come into their lives in the name of Jesus every academic challenge you have tried and done everything you know to do but you need a miracle in the name of Jesus I release my faith upon with you receive academic miracles now 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 we activate angels to faculties angels to departments angels to faculties faculty of art science environmental design medicine engineering administration education we release them now Miracles in the name of Jesus. That favor anointing that makes men run to look for people to bless them. I pray for you. When the favor of God came upon my fever shed, Saul looked for him and blessed him. Receive favor right now unusual favor uncommon favor uncommon favor in the name of jesus before i pray the last prayer point listen if you're here and you've not given your heart to jesus christ please i can't pray this last prayer point without making this sure because i want to pray something dangerous if you're here You've never given your heart to the Lord. Please listen, inside and outside. Or you once gave your heart to Jesus Christ. But for some reason, you see they're already coming out. Follow them. You found out that you need to make your ways right. Please, our time is limited. In one minute, inside and outside, you're welcome. Make your way to the front. God bless you. Bless you. They are coming. Going on here, celebrate them. Don't sit back. Don't sit back. This is a family. This is not all of you. I believe there are still some people outside. Clear the way for them, please. Clear the way. God bless you, sirs. Bless you, sirs. Celebrate them. Jesus is calling you. God bless you, ma. Calling you to give you a new beginning. Please, if they are coming, clear the way for them. So that they don't become discouraged. Motivate them. Clap for them. Thank you, Jesus. Come. Run to Jesus Christ. He will give you a new beginning. If the Holy Spirit is telling you to come out, come out. Don't sit back there. Don't sit back there. Many of you are hearing the nudging of the Spirit. 
he's saying why are you sitting down don't argue with him make your way hallelujah thank you so much for coming out brothers and sisters i want to lead you in a prayer of salvation it's not a poem it's not a special number it's a it's a genuine prayer of dedication god bless you hallelujah lift your right hand high to heaven and say this very passionately please you are not reciting a poem this is not an article you are praying to god this is a prayer that is going to save your soul and redeem you and empower you to be great say lord jesus i believe in you and i love you with all my heart i ask you to forgive me my sins i receive jesus christ into my heart be my lord be my savior from today my past is gone it's a new beginning i receive eternal life into my spirit the old is gone and the new has come in the name of jesus christ i pray for you right now i stretch my hands father these ones have come to make a decision for you i pray that this decision will be permanent they will never backslide no going to the world no going to the flesh i release grace upon you to live the victorious christian life in the name of jesus christ every wrong association every company of wicked and senseless people you will not have any appetite and desire to be close to them again you will love them but you will not associate with them again i receive grace for you to edit your friends wicked and unreasonable people are far from you forever in the name of jesus christ i bless you congratulations in the name of jesus it's a new beginning please follow the gentleman waving his hands and they will have your details will follow you up in the name of jesus Please lift your hands for the last prayer point. I want to pray for the gift of the Spirit to fall upon your life. This is why I said we have to pray for them. Please lift your hands. Just a quick walk in one minute. Some of you have passionately desired certain things. Some of you have had dreams but you cannot understand. God is speaking to you. There are many of you that have longed to hear the voice of God. You are praying and somehow you hear it but there is no clarity and direction. There are some of us that are trusting God for newer levels of the anointing, the gifts of the Spirit. Please lift your hands. In one minute, I'm going to pray. There will be a great impartation upon you. All the gifts of the Spirit, the nine recorded in the Bible and every other one that is available in God. Father, I'm praying right now. As your people shout, I receive. Let there be mighty impartations. There are people here who will carry strange fires strange grace at the count of three shout i receive one two three receive it right now right now right now right now gifts of healing impartations visions 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 prophetic encounters Kaparatata. receive it right now in the name of jesus word of knowledge Word of wisdom, gift of leadership, administration, dreams, visions, entrepreneurship. Every gift available, receive it now, now. Please help that lady so she doesn't injure herself. I pray for you, what you could not do by the gift of the spirit go and begin to do it where you could not enter by this new anointing go and enter nothing dies in your hands in the name of jesus christ Celebrate jesus. dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salman and that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like, 
this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye